using the extra day productively by beating off and napping. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. Check gotta it get, get it on. on. You uh, gotta. You got to. Orny Adams in Ooh. studio. Orny's got dates coming up. Hermosa Beach, California Comedy Magic Club. That'll be March 7th. And then he's heading over to Kimmel's Club in Vegas. That'll be March 15th and 16th. And uh, you can go to ornyadams.com for all the live shows. What's Wrong with Orny Adams podcast as well. I recommend. Good to see you, my friend. Great to see you, too. All right. I have I have thoughts. I know you have thoughts as well. Yeah. Uh, I think we've talked in the past. This happened to me two days ago. A few days ago, I was driving to Vegas. And uh, I'm perplexed at people. I'm not in driving, in terms of driving. People with speed don't bother me. People that go slow you know, bother me a little bit. Um, but the people that drive that are sort of agitated at people around them who are also trying to drive, yeah. it's confusing. Okay. It's confusing to me. I, I need an example, me. a solid example All right. for I'm, our audience. I'm driving. You're right. We got to paint the picture. Let's I, paint it. I'm driving to Vegas. Um, I'm picking up Mike August. He's like in Orange County, whatever. Yeah. And he says to me, go on the, uh, go on the 210, get on the 215. And when you get on the 215, just hop off on one of the exits and grab me. I'll park my car at a parking lot, okay. like at a strip mall, and then I'll jump in the car. Yeah. You don't have to come by my house and pick me up. But I want to drive to the valley. It still feels out of the way. It, it, it'll add... Nine minutes to the, That's it, to the huh? thing. Well, you just get off the freeway, make a left, turn into the, you know, Chili's parking lot. Mike will be there. He'll yeah. throw his bag in the car. You'll turn around and get back on the freeway. Okay. So I pick up Mike, and I'm now leaving the Chili's to make a right on the main highway and get back onto the freeway. So I got to make a right onto the main highway. Well, there's a car on the same highway, but they're going the other direction and they're stopped at the signal and they're going to make a left, mm. which essentially means I'm going to leave the Chili's driveway and make a right. This guy's going to make a left and drive up into the Chili's driveway. But what I don't know is as I start going, this person is not making a left. This oh. person is making a U-turn. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know that move where you're turning right, and you think the person is turning left, but they're not. They're making a U-turn. Yeah. And then at some point, as they're making a U-turn, as I venture out, I see, oh, no, he's not turning behind me. He's going in front of me now. And I put the brake on. So I start moving. I move about eight feet. I see, oh, this isn't a left turn. This is a U-turn. And I stop. <laughs> and the person gives me the, what the hell? You and it's like, yeah. what, what do you How mean, you know? what the hell? You First off, you made a U-turn. Right. A little unusual. 86% of people would have turned up the driveway, but you are bringing it around. There is no turn I indicator have, for a U-turn. I've there said should this be. for years. It should be twice as fast blinking. Or I've said it for years. Or you got to go Morse code with it. You know what I mean? Tick, 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 yeah. tick, 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 whatever it is. But you're just blinking. I'm turning. So I go, okay, he's turning left. But the process is, I see you're making U-turn, so I stop. What is the expectation that you have on the road? That we announce, Stuart is driving today, everyone stays home? Yeah. Or like, or we're not also allowed to try to arrive at some destination? Like, what would you like to do? Get out of my car and just stand by <laughs> it while this, you complete your U-turn? Like, what, this what is do you what think I'm the talking world about. is offering you? And this is all I saw because you and you I stopped. had to pick up You're Mike right. August. Okay? <laughs> it's so true. You, it would add seven minutes or whatever it is. It's the, the mental butterfly energy. Effect. It's I, six hours of mental energy for I Mike August. I saw you do a very low percentage move on the highway, which is a U-turn. And the second I saw it, I just stopped. Who has we right away? I the person turning right has the think, right yeah. of way. I have the right of way. Yes. Number one, you should have just waited. You could see I was sitting there. You knew what I was doing. Yeah. I was turning right. I had my blinker on. I was in the right thing. You should have waited for me to go, and then you just could have tucked in right behind me. So a, I have the right of way, yeah. but b, 
I didn't come close to you. I just saw right. what you were doing and went, oh, stopped. And this happens a million times where you're like backing down and the driveway you, and then someone comes down the street and you stop and, and, the and they horn. go, whoa, what's <laughs> going on? It's like, there's a driveway. There, I own a car. Yeah, this I happened go to me. Places. You're slowly this <laughs> happen- I stopped. I stopped. I've got to stop you. I've got to stop Please. you. You're scaring the listeners. I'm sorry. You have a, a heart condition. We're, we're, we've got. You're the, right. The, the, they're in the booth. They, they're firing up the defibrillator. The you know, <laughs> they're rubbing the pads. Yeah, they're they rubbing gotta, the pads. They put the uh, gel on there. They yeah. might be taking a, a mammogram too. Do they need Grand to rub the paddles? Yeah, they do. Are they don't get worked up about everything. What? Are they warming them up because they're cold on my chest? Did you take a couple of Days off from podcasting. You're on. You're coming in hot. I'm coming in hot. As the kids say, you know what I mean. I'm here to help. I'm I'm here to help. Go ahead. If there's a problem, yo, I'll solve it. Check out the hook while the DJ revolves it. Oh man, is that ice? Ice. ice. I only know white rappers. Mm -hmm. I should say support. No, I have. I have many thoughts. Uh, One, Mike Og is probably not worth. All this aggravation. Right. Two, and we sure. love Mike. We, we love, love Mike. Mike. It's not worth the yeah. <laughs> to, uh This happened to me the other day, too. And I was completely at fault. I was trying to pull out of a street, and there were uh, construction trucks on both sides. I couldn't see the people coming right. from from my left. Oh. And the guy coming down was going so fast. Right. And I sort of had to inch out. And as I inched out, there's a guy coming from my left, and I'm like, I better shoot out. And then this guy comes flying down. So now I stop in the middle. <laughs> And I gave the apology, and the guy still gave me the, you know, what the, like, the rage. The, and yeah. I wanted to follow him. <laughs> I wanted to follow him. I had, like, this fantasy that, like, I was a fighter, like an MMA guy. Yeah. And I wanted to rip him out of the car mm. and just because I was at fault, and I was mature enough to say, sorry, you know, yeah. sorry. It's on you. Yeah, it was on me, but you can't. There's no room for mistakes in this society anymore. My favorite, I got my two favorite flip offs to me of all time. <laughs> uh, the two that are, that are, that are, look, you know, what time were my kids born? I don't know. How much did they weigh when they were born? I don't know. What's their astrological sign? I don't know. They're born sometime in June. You figure it out. What are their names? But I know. <laughs> I don't know. I know one of them, but I don't want to hurt the other one's feelings. Yeah, that's the girl. I so, know. I but I connection. do remember exactly where I was when I got flipped off. Like yeah. time, date, stamp in my head, like with the two <laughs> ultimate flip offs. First off, I like the guy. There's two. There's 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 three flip offs. There's the inside the car flip off, yeah. which is fine. There's the I'm going to roll the window down and put the hand out flip off. That's the Massachusetts uh, bird. Then there's the ultimate platinum flip <laughs> the bird, which is hand out the window flip off with the twist. It's mm. if you're getting pegged by their index finger. What do you mean? You're, Show me, because you're doing a the, claw my, hand. They're, my hand's fucked up. But I mean, they, what do you they, mean they, your hand's fucked up? My hand, because I used to work for a fucking living. I didn't stand around and tell jokes. Let's not make this All about right, how sorry. you paid your dues. Yeah. All right. your, the point your, is, is yeah. they, nice. they yeah. do the flip with the bird the and the twist. twist. Yeah. The twist is if I'm penetrating. I'm now violating you yeah. with my <laughs> index finger. You what know? did you do to deserve this? This is the greatest. There is a street. In this, uh, there's a street called the uh, Coenga or something. I'm trying to think of. Uh, I'm trying to think of Riverside turns into Camarillo, mm-hmm. out in Toluca Lake or whatever. Yeah. It's one of those streets where it's a two laner, mm-hmm. and it goes into a one lane. Okay. And so everybody was waiting, but because it's a sort of a two laner, everyone was sort of in the left lane because it's about to become one lane. And a guy in an RX-7 who was about 18 cars back just drops it into second gear, goes to the right. I float out. Goes hauling ass all the way down thing, which I appreciate. And as the signal changes, I start pulling forward and he just goes sailing past me, like almost clips me because he's got a slide in front. He jumped the line about 20 people. Time the light, but was a couple beats late because I was just pulling forward and he yeah. slides right in front of me. Mm-hmm. I give a toot on the horn, like, hey man, you almost clipped me. Just just a light toot. Hand sails out the window, bird with the twist. Oh. And it's like he's driving like Joey Chitwood thrill team. Wait, are you both stuck there at the light with the finger out the window? I no, we were driving. Oh, we were driving. He, he flew right yeah. past me, cut in front of me, and because I Dared to toot the horn, <laughs> hand flies out, 
Fuck off. I've, which said I this, I've said this for years. They need to take horns out of cars mm. because nobody cares. You used to, in the old days, you'd honk and then somebody would apologize. Like right. if they sort of almost hit you. Right. Now it just starts a, a fight, like the a massive, rage. massive. Yeah. Yeah. The other, uh, the other all timers, when I, I was coming home from Vegas, stopped at, you know, terrible gas station or something to fill up or whatever. It's getting like back on the 15. And as I was getting back, it was one of those things where I was merging and a car was coming fast up in, in a lane that was one over. And I started to merge into the lane and I saw them and I went, oh, and I pulled back. You know, it's like yeah. you, you start the move and then you go, oh, you pull back. Laying on the horn. Now I'm back in my lane, but yeah. they still got to do the horn. Chick rolled the window down, shoved her entire torso out. Like, like, torso out. Like she was sitting yeah. on the sill of the window outside, hung her entire body out for oh. the F. For the bird. That's commitment. Wow. Yeah, that's commitment. Yeah. yeah, it was like fast and furious when they're jumping <laughs> from one car to another car. Yeah. That's what she was doing. I, I've stopped trying to correct people's behaviors Good. On, on the road because you'll get killed. Like when you were talking about that guy, you know, shooting over on the right, I mm -hmm. used to drift over. Right. So then they couldn't. Right. I'd right. stop. Like it drives me nuts. Like, you know, going down La Cienega and you're going to get on the 405, mm -hmm. everybody knows. They do it every night. You line up on the left. Right. But there's always the people that are better than everybody else, yes. whose time is more important, that float down the right as if they're going to go to where that uh, donut place is. Uh, right. And, and, they, and they merge in. They wedge in. And people let them. I don't let them. Good. I go, you know, and I've gotten into. But I, let me ask you another policy thing, as it as it pertains yeah. to automotive. Okay. This this happened to me this morning, okay. tragically, and I think you're going to be behind this policy, Warney. Yeah. I don't think you should be able to construct a driveway or a road that is so steep. Mm -hmm. That when you open a car door, oh wow, yeah, and it stops in its set position, and you back off, it doesn't come slamming down huh. because of the grade. Okay, okay, and all and or so this happened this morning. I, I, I'm cursed because I, I used to go to Jimmy's house uh, uh, up in the hill, or whenever I go to Jimmy's house, he lived on such a steep grade. A lot of people complained about that. They did. Yeah, there's actually Reddit subgroups about there Jimmy's should driveway. Be. Not the driveway, his street. His street, his street, rather. Yeah, that's what. Uh, you would open the car <laughs> doors. Are you looking this up? I'm kidding. No, I'm, I'm tell kidding. Me, but tell me this design with car doors. You open the car door, it, it, it gets to its open spot where it drops into its little notch. Yeah. It'll stay for two seconds. It, it stops, it stays, and then it comes, the, the guillotine comes slamming, <laughs> comes yeah. slamming out. My opinion is don't stay. Then, and if you're not going to stay for as long as you need to stay, don't stop. It'll stop for like a three Mississippi, yeah. long enough for you to turn your back and start getting your travel mug out. Of it. Then it slams shut. So, but how are you cursed? My own driveway. I used to make that announcement mm -hmm. about Jimmy Street all the time. Yeah. Then I bought a condo in Malibu, and it has a short but steep driveway. And I pulled in last night at just the wrong angle. And when I was going this morning to come here, I opened the car door. It stopped. It always stops for a, a three Mississippi. You open it, you look at it for a beat, and you go, okay, we're cool. Then I start turning around, slap shut, travel mug, knocked out of hand, oh. spills all over, fuck in front of my shirt and sleeve. Yeah. And I got to go back up and like get the get the mop out, oh, you know, yeah. get the rag out and clench, 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 the coffee all over the seat of the car. Yeah, you're you shouldn't, listen, you shouldn't <laughs> be able to construct a driveway at a grade where the car door won't stay open or we need the car doors to have a little more, a little more grab on them. Or, or yeah, but it's your house. You should know this could happen. You've lived there for quite some this time. Is, this is a good point and the problem <laughs> is of course, it's a good the point. The problem is, is if you pull to the left side, it's got a little different grade on it, and you'll make it. If you pull to the right side, it's a little steeper. And I just sort of pulled in. Yeah. I was late at night, and I just sort of pulled yeah. in sort of sideways. Can and it I, was unclear whether it would I make it or make not. I got to make a recommendation yeah. because mm. it's, I'm here to solve the problem. How about the doors fucking stay open? Okay. Like, how about you have to pull them a little bit but to get them shut? But you can't spend your life fighting the automotive 
industry and their lack Ralph of Nader, strength. Ralph yeah, and Nader where is did, he now? Yeah, he, right. he did quite nicely. Thank you. Okay. Here's what I suggest. I, I know, I've seen you. your driveway. Mm-hmm. I understand the hurdles of your driveway. You do. Yeah. And, and you have this beautiful tree mm-hmm. that goes over the driveway. You, you need to hang one of the ping pong balls mm. and you're, it has to hit the middle. When it hits the middle of your windshield, mm. you know that's a safe area. Uh, Just like a garage. I, yeah, they do that with tennis balls in garages. No, it's, I, I think it's a ping pong usually. Did they switch it to ping pong? Yeah, there I was, was thought it was tennis. It was, was it? tennis. Really? Well, I, because tennis balls are the universal ball that can be <laughs> appropriated off the tennis court. Yeah. Yeah, for dogs. Some what else is there? Walkers. Walkers. Yeah, well. Oh. Yeah, the wa- why don't the walker people make I, the walkers I, with I, that I, option? That, that, why are we having the old people pull out knives I, and slit a tennis ball? I just doesn't feel safe. A million <laughs> times. It drives me nuts. And sometimes you see like they have a, a yellow ball and a white ball. Yeah, like they're not even matching balls. I Your agree. balls have to match. Also, there's nothing <laughs> that says I can't. There's no further away from tennis than a walker. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, we're now drawing attention to your decrepit elderly body that's going to be in the ground in six months, but I'm thinking about tennis. But it isn't like one or two walkers you've seen in your lifetime. It's like 90%. Why don't the walker people figure it out? I'm done. Okay. The other, you know, the other place the, the tennis ball is utilized. Yeah. Every single set. That has the jib camera, right? Has the tennis ball on the bottom of it, so they don't whack people mm-hmm. in the head when they're walking past the jib. Yeah. Yes. You know what it's like. I'll, I'll tell you what it's like. Um, if you ever go to a diner, and they have, they always have the same. They always have the same container of water, and it's it's got the the water jug. It's not the jug, but the what is it with the handle and the spout and then pitcher pitcher sorry the pitcher the pitcher of water if you ever go to a diner they have the pitcher of water it's got the ice floating in the top and it's got a spout but they don't use the spout they pour it sideways they right they, the they always pour it side i know but design something design it <laughs> they're, they're using it sideways and, 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 and i don't know if you're an iced tea drinker but there's nothing worse when they come back to refill and there's no ice at all. But and they, now you're drinking but they still, something that's in between iced tea and hot but tea. But if there is ice on the iced tea refill, they're going sideways. They're not using the spout. I'm just saying this takes place 200 million times a year in 500,000 diners. So fucking figure it out. Why is iced tea more expensive than hot tea? It's old tea. Is it? We're doing you a favor. Nobody, yeah. nobody. That's not true. Don't ruin what could be a great <laughs> bit. That's not a good <laughs> bit. I laughed at your stupid. The guy was taking a U-turn. Nobody cared. <laughs> because the audience was dialed out. No, no one's had an experience. No, look, if we're going to be fair, we're going to be fair here. They do. do you, Ice tea's the old tea. Uh, Chris, <laughs> do you think... I throw this to everybody. That's a bit, but what? not more expensive. It is more expensive. No, I iced think coffee hot tea is, too. is more expensive. Uh, okay, coffee. Iced coffee is more expensive than hot coffee. And if you go to like a I Starbucks. Don't know that to, I, at a, I know that. At a first. diner? At a restaurant? Whatever. It's, it's okay. traditionally okay. old coffee right. that you're serving. We'll accept this premise. We'll it's like the crouton of beverages. The, the old coffee. Yeah. Wait a minute. What's... Like croutons should be free. I. Well, Listen, they, they should be free. I, I don't think they charge. For it's crouton. old friend. It's an add-on. <laughs> they never. I've never been gouged for croutons. Do you have to buy them in the supermarket? How about this? Belts. Why are belts so expensive? It's like scrap leather. Oh, I'll tell you the belt. I'll tell you the belt bit. I'll give you the belt bit. You. Oh, under- by the way, we're officially eight months away from you bringing back the Halloween bit. I don't know if we can put it in the corner <laughs> of the screen, but Corolla's, you know, Halloween um, bit where he adds one new line and calls it a reissue. I may cancel all my shows and tell <laughs> Halloween's yeah. Eve so I have yeah. something to talk about yeah. on stage. Let me tell you the problem with belt, and this is a real problem. The belt, and I found this out when I was doing the man show, I would go to the, the wardrobe guy, right? He'd give me the belt, He'd lay out your wardrobe, and the belt would come around your waist and just touch. The one end would touch the buckle, but it wasn't enough to go through the buckle and have four inches of whatever. Yeah. And so then I would go to Rodney, the very experienced wardrobe guy, and go, uh, I need a belt. And then he'd, I'd go, the one you gave me is too small. And then he'd go, 
well, what do you got? A 34, 35 inch waist? I go, yeah. And he go, yeah, I got you the 30, I got you the 34. But the 34 meant no. overall yeah, 34. So you got to go up it's 36. It's for your waist. It's for your, if you order a belt that's a 36, it's for a 36 waist, not 36 overall. So why don't they why don't size they figure it, like it out? That? They figure the shit well, out. No, if you're if you're a 34 inch waist, the belt should be 36 inches, but they should call it a 34. Right. It's right. Wrong. So I would say to him, "Well, Rodney, well, wait a minute. I told you I needed a 34." He'd go, "It's a 34." Uh-huh. I'd go, "It's 30 34 overall, which means I can touch it, but I can't yeah. use it. And then he went, I went, is a 34 for a 34 waist or is a 34-inch belt a 34-inch belt? And he went, I don't know. They're he always like know. different. Well, Robbie. nobody knows anything. But the, the whole point is, is we need to figure out this belt crisis yes. because you order a 36-inch belt for your 36-inch waist, but it will. it's enough that if it was electrified, you could make a spark in front of your navel, but you could never get it fastened. And I would like to just live in a world where whatever the belt size was, that was the waist size. Me and too. they figured out the extra four inches or the two holes you'd want to go past or but that is it. And I don't know what it is even now, and I'm scared to find out. It's still that way. You you have to order a belt two or four sizes. I don't even wear are. belts anymore. I did a uh, I did a private show at. Uh, have you been to this Tarania Tarania Ranch or whatever or in Palos Verdes? Oh, Tarania. Tarania. No. Is. Yeah, it's, gr- it's gorgeous. Oh, really? It's g- gorgeous. And then mm-hmm. I drove through Torrance. I'm not from Southern California, but I would move to this Torrance. Right. Nobody talks about it, so I think the real estate must must be low, but it's mm-hmm. a cute town right on the water. Mm-hmm. But I, I wore a suit, no belt. I'm going no belt. No belt. No belt, no socks. No socks. No, no socks. Belt. A real F you. A real right out the oh, window. Shaking bird to do uh, <laughs> corporate America. Take that, corporate America. Do you think? Because <laughs> I'm matching your energy today, buddy. I'm angry. I'm fired up. <laughs> do you think? And I'll leave this to our listeners with their uh, great comments. They'll mm. put the comments under the YouTube video. Do you think more tennis balls are used for tennis or outside of tennis? I would say outside, outside. of tennis. At this, at this point, there's yeah. enough camera jibs, walkers, yep. and garages where yep. you want to know where to stop than there are actual tennis players. Dogs, it, everything it's, else. It's a great form of recycling. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I imagine the old people walking around with their walkers going to the outside courts and finding <laughs> old tennis balls. I'm, I'm with you in that the walk— I, it, First off, I think it's a slap in the face if you manufacture anything and it immediately needs to be modified yeah, when right. the person that purchases it receives it. Right. That just means you're not manufacturing it right. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? And the tennis balls that way. And how many... You mean the walker. The walker, sorry. How many people have been injured taking a steak knife That's and trying I'm to saying. shove it through a tennis ball. It's, it's a, a countless emergency room trips. I think they actually sell Walker tennis balls now. I think they're in the back of the pharmacy with the diabetes mm-hmm. socks and the pill cases. So you know what day of the week it is, <laughs> yeah. you know, that section. I used to do a joke about that. Like, you, you know, you ne- you never see that wall as a kid. Right. You're just at the front. The, the older the, you get, the further back in the pharmacy you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. When you're a kid, you're at the front register. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, you're in the foot section. You get right. older. You're at the uh, blood pressure machine and then the wall with the diabetes. So I, I imagine eventually the, a wall opens up and they just drag you into an yes. old age home. And you never return. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I discovered? Yeah. Look at that. They make tennis balls. Pre-slit is that tennis from a, balls. A, a, a sex toy shop? They make pre-slit. You make an X into it yeah and then you you drop that or or it either means the tennis ball is dead or drunk because that's always whenever you do the x well listen Mm. i found out that you and i actually agree on something do you want what we agree on or what we don't agree on first let's go what we agree on first you and i have the same gripe and i only found this out because pete holmes was on my podcast by the way pete holmes you what? I love Pete. Holmes. Yeah, I know you do. Mm-hmm. Guest of the year? Yeah. Mm. I mean, come on. He was really good. <laughs> come he on. Good. He's very Pete good. Holmes. He's is that, really skilled. Though, is right? that yeah. because you think maybe he'll get another show like crashing and he might put you on it? I mean, <laughs> every move I make is strategic. Yeah, you know me. It's transactional. <laughs> it's all transactional. There's no way Pete Holmes is a better guest than me. I'm he, sorry. He's it, so funny. He was so. Clever. Oh, he's great. Yeah. He's great. Clever. 
I, yeah. I love him, but mm-hmm. I'm me. Yeah. And somehow I, I found out it was leaked to me on uh, on X that I won an Ace Award. Mm-hmm. I just assumed. I don't even know what I won, but I just assume I was guest of the year. Sure. That's all the chatter oh. on the internet that I'm the guest of the year. Come to find out it's Pete Holmes. Yeah. yeah. He's a really great pharmacy bit that he. Yeah. yeah he he does time. this whole where you're at in the pharmacy by what age yeah. bit. And it's really funny. Boy, I, I'm Walker sure the voting. Ball thing. Who votes? You and Chris and the, the guys in the booth? I mean. Yeah, I don't. I stay out of it. There's a board. Oh, you do? I do what Joe Biden does with his Justice Department when his Justice Department is looking into his son. And, I just stand and, back. And by the way, I don't know what's going I don't on make with your, any phone calls. your left hand with your pinky, but you're starting to look like you got Joe Biden hands. My hands are, are have, have, have suffered quite a bit of trauma over so the years. So let me get, I bet the staff is like, we got to find a guest of the year that didn't upstage Adam, that made Adam feel good. Like, it's not anybody <laughs> like me that challenges you, right? No, no. I mean, we love Pete. <laughs> We love, love Pete. Love Probably Pete. came on and gushed over you. On my podcast, he compared me to Carlin. So I'm sure really? you, he's probably compared you to uh, Jimmy J.J. Walker, something like that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're going to tell me there's yeah. something we agree on. Yeah, we do. So he's, he brought up on my podcast that you, gotta, you get upset about some things that he doesn't think is rational. Uh, and well, I said to him, I use ways and I enjoy ways. Yeah. I I was in, I I had to drive to Las Vegas and come back from Las Vegas, and I used ways to go. What time should we leave? Would it be better to leave mm-hmm. mid morning or earlier in the morning? And what time shall we return? And it was very accurate and helpful. And he's somehow taking a principled stance against <laughs> ways, and I don't understand it because it's been a yeah. mitzvah. In my life. And this is the guest of the year. That's right. All right. But okay. but go ahead. So uh, he said, Adam gets all fired up. He didn't say ways uh, about people putting stuff in his trash cans. And I, it, I get so angry. I put out my trash cans at nighttime, and I almost pick them up immediately after they're picked up. Mm-hmm. And people are putting their bags of dog shit mm-hmm. in my trash bags. It bends, and then it smells. Yeah. Yes. It, I've gotten to this argument many times. Uh, years ago, I would argue with Paul Bryan. Now, yeah. there's a lot of people in this world where you go, does he really think it's or I go, I don't know. He could have just been arguing because a lot of people in my life just argue with me. I don't know how no, they no. really feel about stuff. But yeah. what I was saying is, is when you take your dog for a walk and you pick up the poop bag, and you throw it into an empty garbage can, that then means that guy's going to drag the garbage can with your poop in it for, for, a week. for a week, and he'll sit in the hot sun in the San Fernando Valley, and every time he empties his garbage, he'll be greeted by your dog poop. Yes. If the, and it smells vile. If the thing is full, that means it hasn't been picked up yet, and yes, you can set it on I, top of a pile I of disagree. leaves. I disagree. I <laughs> disagree. If it's full and no. it's out, then it's going to get picked up. I, I, it's not something I recommend my children do, but that's acceptable. And then I explained to Bald Brian that I would take the bag and instead of throw it into someone's empty can, there was like an ivy embankment on some easement lot or something. And I would just chuck it up the ivy embankment, you know, way off, way off the beaten path, which he then said was much worse yeah. than putting it into the trash can. Because and- of the plastic. Why not just encourage your dog to go to the bathroom in that area? It's up an embankment. Yeah, well, your side dog of an can't go up an embankment. I don't have. It's not a mountain lion. It's a fucking dog. But the the point is, is <laughs> dragging the can back with the dog poop and only the dog poop in it because it's been emptied now by the city. That seems to be n- not a neighborly move. You're hot boxing. You're hot boxing. The, the trash. I I think even if it's full, there's residual smell. Mm. In the plastic, plastic holds smell, and your dog's crap is not my problem. I get Take it. Take it home. So I, I was so fired up. This is happening every week, and I have, All right, but can I we, have can three we cameras agree, on can my we, trash cans. Can we agree that an empty <laughs> trash can, that's a 10? That's one week of you living with that stranger's no. dog poo. That's a, 10. that's a 10. 
and putting it on top of a filled trash can is more in the three to no, four range. No, 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 they're both tens. Because <laughs> no, <laughs> ten. yeah, because it's it's first of all they don't look. They're scared, so they just open and throw fast. They're not like opening and inspecting. Is there trash in there? Okay, and it's <laughs> lurk, either it's wrong. Or it's not wrong. You can't say, oh, it's okay if under these conditions. We must make it a law that you can't. I, Zero tolerance. I. It happens every week. I'm with and you. And then I have three cameras that mm-hmm. are on my trash cans. Mm-hmm. And I get the three camera shoot. And I, inspe- I actually approached a neighbor mm-hmm. who claimed that they were going to come back after their walk <laughs> and take the trash did they go who, into my trash and take their shit. How did they, who did they make this proclamation to? To me. Because you saw them do it? On camera. And he confronted well, wait a them. minute. How did they know? Oh, oh, you, you confronted them. I'm yeah. sorry. And they said, oh, I was just, I was just holding it right. until I came back. My blood pressure, <laughs> when yeah. I see it in mm. my trash can, I start looking at all the angles. I can't watch it fast enough. Right. I have a neighbor that has two other cameras that's on it. Like, I'll get, mm-hmm. I'll do a Hollywood edit of this thing yeah. and send it to the neighbor. Get so, a score and a sound mix. Yeah. So I thought, I must not be the only one. Uh, that has this problem. So I go online, and mm-hmm. you can actually buy deca- decals that say, you know, please don't put your poop in my cans or uh, no yeah. poop cans. Etsy yeah. has an entire store. Mm. And so I went to order it, and then I thought, I am going to write on a piece of paper. And I, I gave you guys this picture. Uh, there it is. That's my trash can. It says, no dog shit, please. Yeah. And I want it to look like I'm crazy. You do. Like yeah. I'm going to come out with a gun. It worked. Yeah. You always and, write it with your bad hand. Yeah. That That's how you write ransom notes. You know what you should have done? You should have clipped letters like a ransom note mm-hmm. and put that Well, in. show the decals that I sent over. These are like, and, the, and I'm going to start my own Etsy store with handwritten notes like mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. But I sent over some pictures. That I didn't see any decals. You didn't see, no. uh, they didn't send it over? Mm. Okay. Oh, well, we can find them. But yeah. No. I, I listen, I'm with you. That don't don't throw it in my trash I, can. Listen, I I have come to love dogs in the last couple of years. I was mm-hmm. bit by a dog as a kid, so I was sort of upset about. But I, your dog don't your dog shouldn't take over my life. I, have I don't the, want the dog next to me on the plane. I have the exact. I don't same want the relation, dog on the patio. I have the uh, same of, relationship of the with, with black people. Okay. I, I had an issue when I was a kid, but now. I'm over it. Oh, good. And I, I look forward to sitting next to him on a plane. <laughs> yeah, but no, I get it. I don't want your fucking dog on the plane. I don't care about your dog. Uh, and if your dog shits, you need to take care of it. Can I tell you? you I think you're going to, no matter what. I yeah. am. I'm true. Yeah. A, somebody let their dog shit on the sidewalk directly in front of the opening to the gate to this facility. Literally, when the gate opens, there was oh. a shit that was right there, and it's been there for like three weeks, and then it rained, and it just got bloated, yeah. and it sat there, <laughs> and then it, but it's literally... The dog shit right in front of the opening to the slider gate. A people with your fucking dogs. You have, and listen, I've had a situation where I've like gone out with the dog and oh shit, I'm out of bags or whatever. You got to kick that shit. You mm-hmm. got to grab a leaf. Mm-hmm. You got to, you got to improvise mm-hmm. at that. You, at that point, you're Tom Hanks on a fucking Island, but figure it out. Th- you can't leave when your yeah. dog's offerings on a sidewalk right in front of a gate. I think the dog owners have to address the other dog owners is what I think really needs to happen. There needs to be a summit. But- what if there was some sort of exchange program where I could drop my dog shit off in your trash can, but you oh, that's fine. could drop your dog shit off in my trash can? If there yeah. was an understanding, yes, yes. I'd, I'd okay. be fine with that. I don't have a dog. Oh. I don't want your yeah. dog Is there any shit. way you can get some dog shit so we can make this happen yeah. without a dog? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just, like, I for agree. some reason, I don't like so people putting stuff you, in my you, trash you, bins. You, you talk to your neighbor. Yeah. And your neighbor explained two of them, two of them that they two were coming back. No, one said they're coming back, and one said, uh, "You know, I have, I have a beautiful landscaping around my house, and and this dog kept urinating." Mm-hmm. And I said, "Could you wait twenty feet where there's an open hill?" Right, right. Could you just pull the dog a little? Right. So that she was very apologetic. That mm-hmm. neighbor. That's the good. The other neighbor said that they were coming back for the bag. Right. So they're going to reach into my trash can? Insane. Yeah. I, yeah. Like maybe the guy tucked it in a lean cuisine box or something was going to bring the whole thing out no. like an envelope. Yeah. No. 
I understand. Don't tell me this process. If this is okay, yeah. I have done this. I have gone with my dog and taken off down the road with my dog and one block after a two mile, what's going to be a two mile walk, the dog squatted one, right? Mm -hmm. Then I bagged it, tied it off and set it against the curb in the gutter because when I come back, <laughs> yes. I will retrieve it. Yeah. And have had a situation in the past where I have done that and then came back another direction or it got dark or something. And I realized when I got home, I left the dog shit on someone's curb, not on someone's curb, but the street. And the next morning I, I went back when I was driving to work and just pulled over yeah. and, and got it. Now it's an issue because it's in the car. Yeah. But the, but the point is, is where are you on setting the bag down the problem is, is the retrieval is probably only about 40 or 50%. It's a percent low percentage. It. But, but my choices are going on a journey with this, with, with this bag. Can I tell you of, the solution? Of shit. Yeah, you know, I'm going to be Jack yep. Kerouac with a sack of dog shit exploring the country and or putting it in someone's trash I, can. I know the solution. I'm going to allow okay. Chris to have a moment to say what it is. Oh, it, you you have to deposit something valuable along with the, oh. with the, with <laughs> the dog leash. Like like tie it to the leash. Credit card. Credit or, card, driver's license. like a bowling you know, your left shoe, you know, just so put you, a shoe down <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. You know you're coming tie back. it to the leash. I don't travel with an extra shoe. Would I have to take off one of my yes. shoes? You have to take off your current okay. shoe. Yeah, how right. convenient. You walked home a different way that <laughs> one night. That one night. No, what happened was is I think it got dark and I forgot about it and I walked you past panicked. it. I panicked and I walked <laughs> past it. And speaking of dark and walking down the street, these trick-or-treaters show Oh, wow. wow. I mean, give me a wow. break. We got to start preparing now. Now they're wow. busing what? in. They're bust. They're gerrymandering. They want, they want my Twizzlers. They want full size candy. Go back to earn the, it. Go to the barrio, you bro. Earn it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it builds character. I told my son, my my sons, they, they, they I made them trick or treat in the crap neighborhood that I, my kids, blah 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 blah. Still All right, up. so do you, you want to hear my nine one one story? So yeah, but uh, but we agree. Yeah, and for some reason. Guest of the year, Pete Holmes. Yeah. I mean, Just not wow. sign off on it not being okay to put your dog shit in someone else's trash can? He's, he thinks that you're absolutely crazy. That what, when you lift the top, you know, are you sniffing it? And But I I get it. It's no, not. You get hit in the face. It's not. It's not. I think it's just because Pete has never had that happen to him. The people well, first have had off, it happen to him. During the summertime. If you're in the San Fernando Valley or in SoCal <laughs> and you drag those cans to the back, you don't put the can indoors often. It's just sitting out. I do. If that thing is sitting out in the sun and it's July or August in L.A. and the San Fernando Valley, the it's, inside of the can is 130 degrees. Whatever's in there is steamy. cooking. In your garage, it's just as hot. Yeah, but when it's hit by the sunlight, then most people park it next to the fence on the side yeah. of the driveway. It's getting hit by the sun. No, there should not be a shit offering that you drag back onto your property and park in the sun. I figured no. out what, what Pete said that really upset me. Mm. He said, uh, he goes, no, I win it every time I'm on. Guest of the year. Is he a oh, multiple? He's really, good. really? He could so be the guy. Wow. Yeah. I need to study Pete Holmes' yeah, appearance. Break that film down. You obviously haven't. Let me, I'll practice. Oh, man, Adam, you look great. You look, you've lost a lot of weight. And <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, I did, when I saw you do stand up, man, blown I was away. I, yeah, I was blown away. This yeah. Is, I need hey, to, did you hear the Halloween bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Halloween bit. Most original, greatest bit ever. You know, yeah, because no one else has a bit on Richard Halloween. Richard Pryor would have loved that bit. Pryor. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if that. I think that bit was too good for Prior Pete. Yeah, yeah. You're I'm right. sure it's a lot. What did I win for? Uh, probably a segment that made Adam look good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's called Fluffer of the Year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, nine one one call. Okay, so I have now called nine one one four times in a calendar year. Wow. Okay. I've never lived in a city where I've ever. I lived in Manhattan. I never had interaction with the police. Yes. Okay. So I call. Okay. So what happens is they keep cutting. The copper wires mm -hmm. in the neighborhood for the cable. Right. And they they sell it. <laughs> I don't know what they do. They boil off the plastic and then they sell the copper. They strip the, yeah, they strip it and they sell the copper. Okay. Yes. This has now happened three or four times. Yes. It's, it's by the way, it's an apocalyptic sign. It's a bad sign. Mm -hmm. It's not pickpockets 
or bank robbers. It's literally stealing minerals yeah. and goods and elements. Yeah. And it's a it's a it's a it's what you would do in a Thunderdome type situation, mm-hmm. Mad Max or End of Days, where you're literally just pulling wire out yeah. of people's homes and off the street. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and I this is to me the biggest sign of the apocalypse. The is, catalytic converters and the stealing of the wire, that just means we're now breaking things down to stealing elements. We're not stealing car stereos anymore. We're actually stealing things that have been mined from the ground. Right. And they're actually difficult to get the elements out of, like a catalytic converter. And they're doing it in my neighborhood at gunpoint. Really? They have a guy on guard with a gun while they just chop it. They don't care. Wow. They don't care. But this, to me, is the biggest sign. Hire that guy to guard your trash cans. Listen, if that sign says, we have a crazy neighbor... That's all I wanted to say. What my if someone put a sack of shit right on top oh, of that sign? Oh, they, they will. They will. And I'll have a three-camera shoot, and believe me. <laughs> oh, oh, I will see at Sundance. I, yeah. I, I'm this close to snapping. So please. 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 Yeah. All you right, know, so you call 911. No, but here's the biggest sign of the apocalypse. It's a leap year, and nobody's talking about it. Mm. We've dialed out. Yeah, we don't care done. anymore. Leap year used to bring us together. They used yeah. to be like excitement. Yeah, they would explain it. They would talk about how we rotate around the sun and there's an extra quarter day. Yeah, presidents' birthdays, leap years. It all used to be something. Yeah, now we don't care anymore. And, and I know a lot of people want me to be president. I I don't want it. I, who the hell wants that job? But the first thing I would do is I would abolish the three day weekend. Mm. It's a nobody's working anymore. Nah, no, everybody agree. works from home. So now we have an extra day at home. I mean, it's enough. Yeah, we work life balance. We have bad idea. Thanksgiving, multiple days off. Then we have Christmas, New Year's, and we've already had like three three day weekends. In oh, 2024? listen, my, my kids at school, you know, it's Martin Luther King Day, mm. it's Arbor Day, it's President's Day, it's and the, sometimes they just go. It's teacher free day. Like it's a it's a it's a me day. Like the teachers don't feel like coming in. I mean, they average. I would say my kids. If you figure the two weeks for uh, Christmas and then the Easter yeah. break and the summer, they average. And they got a three month you know worth of summer break in every single federal holiday. And then shit they make up. They average. Weekly, if you just said like 52 weeks in a year, they average like 2.6, probably about 2.3 days a week of work. What? How many? Do we have more three-day weekends now than we did 50 years ago? A thousand percent. And how many days do kids go to school now versus? uh, Here's what, here's the, here's the grift. You ready? Mm -hmm. When we were growing up, the teachers had to pretend like they wanted to be there and they needed you to be there. But at some point, they figured out that the kids didn't want to be there, yeah. and guess who else didn't want to be there? Now, their thing was, the teacher's thing is, is I want to get paid, right? but I don't want to be here. And then they say to their constituency, it's essentially their clientele, they go. It's like it's like if you it's like if you worked at a Starbucks and you said to everyone who was at the Starbucks, "Do you guys really want to be here?" And they went, "No, not really." I used to teach comedy traffic school. What? I used to teach comedy traffic school for a place called Let Us Amuse You. L E T T U C E. Let are us. You let us. Um, you know, I could say to any one of those fucking students who were supposed to be there from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., I could say to any, I could say to the entire class at noon, do you guys want to go home? And they'd all go, fuck it, let's go home. And yeah. I'd go, yeah, I want to go home too because I, I want to get paid. But I want to fucking sit here at a YMCA in Arlita on a Sunday until four. I, was like, I could say to them, let's go home. And I, they'd all go, fuck it. And they would all leave because everyone in the building wanted to go home. The teachers, I realize now, want to go home as bad as the students want to go home. So who's watching the hen house? That's what's right. happening. Who's wagging the tail of the dog? That's right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sony's working a lot. I, I, but I did see a video of you that you posted recently where, in the middle of your set, a woman thought you were taking a break, so she <laughs> lit up a cigarette. It's unbelievable. In the club. In the club. Unbelievable. She had to be drinking. I, oh, it's Florida, first yeah. of all. All right. What, I mean, what does she mean? She thought you were taking a break in the middle of your set. Okay. It, 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 
Sometimes he doesn't do comedy for a while. <laughs> I've watched him. I've watched I mean, him. I'm, I'm 60 minutes into my show. 60 okay? minutes And in. you've seen me on stage. I don't uh, stop. A machine. I don't a machine. stop. It doesn't stop. A so comedy machine. At 60 minutes, they want you to get off at 60. I right. keep going. You go it to the audience. Uh, I go. I keep going. Uh, you know, there was no. this was the second show Saturday. I'll keep going. It's mm-hmm. sold out. Mm-hmm. Sarasota, Florida, we mm. added a show, mm. which is, this is something new for me. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Flattering. So, so I'm at 60 minutes. I want to thank the audience. Right. I want to say, hey, I've been coming back here year after year. Right. And we did it. Right. We did it. I want right. to make them feel like they're part of it. Thank right. you for coming out. Right. And, you know, you just want to take a breath. Right. And then go into the closing hunk. Right. So I said, uh, listen, I can't thank you guys enough. I'm going to be back next year. I'm already booked. And uh, if you want to say hi, I'll be in the back. Mm-hmm. If you want to come up and say hi. Mm-hmm. And I, I sell T-shirts and they start applauding. And mm-hmm. a guy in the front row goes, I'll take 10. I go, great. Right. I, there's 10 right there. Mm-hmm. And I look over and a woman is lighting. She has a cigarette. I Should said, we watch it? We I the- said, what do you do? I don't know if the audio is clear enough. Oh, okay. I, I, and I said, uh, what are you doing? And she said, I'm smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> and I, she said, you, you took a break. <laughs> I, go, I took a break. I'm going to try that next time I fly commercially. I go, I've been up here for 65. I look at the clock. It says 65 minutes. I go, a break. I just took, she goes, yeah, you took a little break from the, whatever the thing you were doing. You know, the, the skit, the skit. Were you doing the Halloween material? Yeah, I was doing your Halloween joke. I know, everyone yeah. steals that shit. Yeah, they you know, this it. is like the part of the show where you stop and you drop Kimmel's name. Yeah. It's the equivalent of yeah. that. <laughs> and she, you know, really laid into me and it's, uh, you know, it's sort of gone viral. All right, let's take a look at it. I don't know if it's it. going to translate, but. Right. Are you going to smoke a cigarette right now or? <laughs> What's that? Well, I mean, we're taking a break from whatever. Yeah, but I don't think you can smoke a cigarette in here. You took a break. No, I didn't take a break. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, there's no, did anyone else think I took a break? I, I've been up here for an hour. That's. I took a breath and I sold 10 t-shirts. I don't think that's a break. It's $350 I just made. You can sitting there smoking a cigarette. Who smokes cigarettes in 2024? What? <laughs> you're trying to quit? Yeah, it doesn't look like you're doing a good job. <laughs> Is this your wife, sir? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't marriage wonderful, just like these people say? Uh, yeah, what? No, 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 I'm, uh, the break's over. Sorry. The break's over. You can't even take a breath. I've been up here for 65 minutes. I took two minutes to show a pillowcase, talk to this guy, and I'm being accused of not working hard enough. The tickets are only $30. They should be $75 for my show. Yeah, there's there's a clock. I was in Florida. A lady, you know, they're old, some people are old. The yeah. hamburger didn't come out quick enough. And then the lady canceled the order. I saw the whole hub on Right, right. <laughs> and then 10 seconds later, the burger came out. Right. right? And I sent it. I go, she doesn't want the burger. <laughs> right. She canceled. And I took somebody else's burger and gave her that burger. That's the kind of crowd work that people come to expect from not the guest of the year, but yeah. Orny Adams. <laughs> What did I win for? I don't know. All right, listen, we need to take a break. We got a little bit of news. Haley Joel Osmond is going to come in in a couple of few. So we'll take a break, come back with Orny in the news right after this. You're about to hear a preview of the Jordan Harbinger show with the world's best counterfeiter. How long does it take to print $250 million? Five months. It needs to be worthwhile. It's going to need to be perfect. 12,500 kilos or over eight Toyota Camrys or six Ford F-150s. That is multiple metric tons of cash. You must have been stoked, man, because you knew you were going to put $20 bills all over all of that and then just never work again. Yes. By design, there are people specifically looking for you all the time. This is all they do. You can tell them whatever you want. 
they're not dummies. I mean, this is as high as it goes. It's the stuff of the line. For more on how Frank Barassa printed his own fortune and got away with it, check out episode 488 on The Jordan Harbinger Show, anywhere you get your podcasts. I love pet names. My favorite pet name is Pumpkin. I want to meet the first guy who had the guts to call a girl a pumpkin. It's a fat orange fruit with stripes. We smash on Halloween. First we carve out the eyes. Yeah, you're my pumpkin. Yeah, you're my pumpkin, pumpkin. Not giving you a mouth pumpkin so you can't talk back to me. Orny Adams is on the Adam Carolla Show. I lifted that right off my Halloween bit, the whole pumpkin. Yeah, I think guy. you should. Uh, <laughs> that should be in there. I got sure. pumpkin. I got Why pumpkin are we wearing stuff. headphones? I think we can. We're so uh, we two, may listen to some clips inches. Oh, that's or right. We did listen like to that. a clip. All right. Should we do a little news, Chris? Sure. Just. Uh, I guess we're just going to skip over my 911 story, which is fine. It's a long story. That, 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 I'll tell that, it on the next you one. You made that decision yourself. I didn't make that decision. <laughs> you did. You went on and on about my, you know, the, you took my belt bit. <laughs> So now whose belt bit is this? That's my belt bit. No, it's my belt bit. I had a, uh, my conversation goes back to uh, the man show days. So that's my, my belt bit's grandfather did. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. When sorry. did you officially do it publicly? Um, I must have complained about it that night. Everything that pissed me off during the day, I would go to Loveline that night and then yeah. complain about it. So I think I'm on record on Loveline. Yeah. But all right, sorry. Well, Pete Holmes can decide who's, yes. who gets the He's bed. the arbiter of comedy. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. So DJ Khaled, mm. he was uh, getting ready for a performance at the South Beach Wine and Food Festival in Miami. Mm-hmm. And he was getting out of his car to go to the stage. Mm-hmm. But he was wearing his Jordans. Mm. And he didn't want to get him dirty. So he he actually shared this to his own Instagram. But yeah, um, but yeah, let's watch what happens here. He you don't want to step in sand. He don't want to get him dirty. Can I get everybody to help me? So he's calling two guys Please, over to get him out from from the car you, to the yeah, other vehicle sure. that transports him to the stage, and they carried him just so his Jordans don't touch the sand. Can't mess up the J's. I'm he performing would, live right now. Got to have his J's <laughs> clean. I, he's performing. What? Yelling we the best and then yelling his name and then pointing at the sky and then yelling we the best again. Oh my God. You, the cover, the movie poster of The Bodyguard with Kevin uh, Costner and Whitney Houston. Can you imagine if that was DJ Khaled? He mm. would crush Costner. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> Could you, oh man, somebody, the fireman carry. <laughs> somebody's got to take that. Somebody's got to yeah. take that poster art and replace it with DJ Khaled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are these? Uh, these shoes can't touch the ground? Is that what it is? They- he, he's known to keep his shoes very clean. Like there's yeah. a time where he sat courtside and he put his shoes atop a, a pillow, a matching pillow, so yeah. his shoes right. didn't touch the ground. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe he's trying to return them. I don't know. I can't figure out what makes certain shoes more special than others, but I am on stage sometimes mm-hmm. and I do feel self-conscious that I'm being judged for... My generic shoes. We saw the clip. Mm-hmm. Did you see that clip yeah. too? Well, we just saw we just saw you on stage. But yeah, I, Wait, I didn't. I could I could listen. Yeah, yeah, I was distracted. Yeah, well, you have to have your on stage shoes. What do you? Uh, yeah, you you're just wearing like that looks like Nordstrom rack. Type. Nordstrom rack. And I respect rail, that. I you know. respect that. Thank you. All right, what's next? Um, okay, so Richard Lewis, he. Uh, it was just announced that he mm. passed away, oh, age yeah. 76, suffered a heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, Larry David wrote a, a nice tribute because uh, they met when they were 12 years old at summer camp. He's and, all over the new curb. Yeah. He's, he's, my, he's my, every favorite, episode. my favorite uh, yeah. co-character. Yeah, he was a great Larry stand-up. David. So um, Larry wrote, Richard and I were born three days apart in the same hospital, and most of my life he's been like a brother to me. Uh, he had that rare combination of being the funniest person and also the sweetest, but today he made me sob, and for that I'll never forgive him. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Did you know Richard? You know, I met Richard one time. Mm-hmm. I was I was living in Boston, Massachusetts, and I took the train, the Northeast Corridor train, Amtrak, to, uh, or maybe it was a bus, I probably couldn't afford the train at the time, to mm-hmm. New York City. 
And this was going to be my first time in the city doing stand-up comedy. And I had a backpack full of VHS tapes of my act to hand out to the clubs. Mm-hmm. Not when you sure. were taking a break on stage? Well, it looks like everybody in the studio is taking a break. <laughs> you and Chris are looking at notes. Go when ahead. I speak, everybody looks at their <laughs> notes. Hear you. When you speak, you're fully dialed I in. I have the headphones on. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's let's step it up. All right. So uh, so anyway, I took the. Is anybody listening? I'm listening. I have the headstone headphones on. I'm looking down at Haley Jill's. So I forgot he was in Forrest Gump. Pete Holmes never did this. Yeah, Pete was always on track. He just you know, so stream, stream of consciousness. What is he like? The, 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 like when the, the somebody falls off the bowl and Pete runs in and he keeps the uh, keeps the energy <laughs> rodeo going. Rodeo clown. Yeah, yeah. Is he a rodeo he, clown. He would know. He would get that. He would yeah, understand. I'd, that. I'd like to. Hey Adam, when can I come? This piece of shit chair just broke. When can I? When can I come All in? Right, you were doing to comedy entertain, to entertain Richard while you're Lewis, looking, Rick, looking at your notes Richard for the next guest. Lewis I mean, it's insulting. <laughs> it's insulting. I'm on a three guest show. It's uh, insulting. Right. I'm you, sorry, but we, you were taking we got, a train, but then the you couldn't guest. afford it. You were taking a bus, I'd and you had a backpack full of VHS tapes, and yeah. you're going out to do comedy in Boston for the first time. No, why don't you, hold or on, one you, of the first times. Tell a story. And I got you some, ran. I got some. I got some business oh, to do. No. You go ahead. And, and you. Yeah. And, yeah. and you ran. Now, all right. Yeah, so when I was 19, I had to put my cat down. Yeah. Oh, All no. right, so you ran into Richard. Hold on. Do you know Haley Joe? Pull up Haley. So if somebody could. <laughs> I, I'm looking down. That's all. Okay. That's all. I'm highlighting something. Just but saying, you, you came on my podcast, mm-hmm. and you critiqued my listening skills. And I, I just expect more from you. That's I, all. I keep the headphones on. I listen to every word. Okay. Richard Lewis. So I, I mean, I don't even want to tell the story. I just <laughs> I feel fine. like I died today. No, we now. Dodge your bullet. We'll keep moving. Yeah, no, it's okay. So okay. listen, you know, I didn't get to the 911 story. I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't get to my Richard Lewis story. Rest in peace. What a great guy, really. Yeah. Yeah. Good dude. Yeah. All right. Next door. All right. Well, um, Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he went and ran a 40-yard dash again. So I was going into New York City, and, <laughs> you know, I, 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 took the, uh, I took the train, I think, or maybe, mm-hmm. maybe I took the bus. And, oh, let me guess, Tom Brady ran it faster than he did when he was 19. 22. Wow. Yeah, he ran yeah. it faster. He's at, uh, at 46 now than when he was at 22. Mm-hmm. This is for his, uh, a new shoot for his new No Bull company. Mm-hmm. Wow. He decided to rerun it, and he actually is faster now. Right. He was... But he was what four seven? Now is four, four six five. It's Did pretty impressive. Know? Oh, I do have that. Sorry, I thought. Yeah, I think that's impressive. It's so he, four seven five. He was, to it was four, five, seven. It was five two eight. What is? Oh, it was five two? Yeah. Who? So, yeah, I mean, and now it's a. a, a uh, five two eight. It said five two. It didn't get. Right. Chris, didn't get pull up the picture of then Brady. Five, one is what he? Five one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. They, Really? That's a that's almost two that's almost two tenths just beating yourself by by thirteen inches. Yeah, but he seems weird to me. He's twenty four years older than that. I mean, that's that no, is it's remarkable. A, it's, no, it, it's impressive, but he ran a five two, which is about as slow as you can run a forty well, look in the, at the NFL. First of all, uh, the shoe technology has come a long way. Yeah. He might be running on like AstroTurf now, which maybe has more grip. These are all things to take into consideration. You know what I mean? He's got the anger of having to divorce Giselle That's right. and watch her on different islands with different men. Right. That would make me run oh. faster. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. What, um, Chris? So pull up it was, the- f- sorry, it was 5.28 versus 5.12. Oh, one, two. But yeah, look what he there. looked like at the Columbine. You have, show the at picture. The Columbine. <laughs> That's what it's called, isn't That's it? A high school no. that got shot up with his by shirt a maniac. off. <laughs> Columbine. No, what, is, what is it called? There? Combine. Combine. Okay. So Columbine was a high school. Laugh at me. <laughs> sorry, of the sorry, I'm a little <laughs> flustered by your note taking. Well, there's just a big difference you, between Columbine <laughs> and Combine. Yeah, so we're going to laugh at me? Is that how we treat our guests? A lot, of, a lot of dead kids. That's all, okay. that's all I'm saying. Well, there he is. There he is. That's, a, right. that's a Columbine he's, he's, of a body. He's, a, he's an accomplishment. There's no yeah. doubt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's this uh, mom in Ireland. 
She's mm-hmm. 36 years old. She got in a car accident in 2017, mm-hmm. and it left her with, quote, debilitating pain, leaving her unable to lift heavy bags, keeping her in bed on bad days. Mm-hmm. And um, so she she filed a claim, and she's going to get $820,000. Yeah, I don't trust her. Yeah, already. I don't trust anyone that just got into something and just claims they can't do shit I mean, for the she was unable to life. lift groceries, Bullshit. do chores, play with her uh, two everyone kids. Everyone says that. Everyone says that. They're fine. Everyone's fine. Well, um, so her case came unstuck when a photo published in a newspaper almost a year after her accident showed this, and that's her complete competing in a Christmas tree Christmas tree oh, throwing What a shocker! I was right about this bitch that was trying to build the system. <laughs> I'm so surprised. I should be guest of the year. I don't trust anyone with their fucking back pain and their neck pain and their I can't do anything. If you if you got if if you if Ed McMahon walked into any of their fucking houses with a styrofoam check and said I got one million dollars if you peel off ten push ups right now, bitch, everyone would do it. Mm. Everyone who's on disability, ninety six percent of people that are on disability, if the ghost of Ed McMahon walked in with a foam core check for one million dollars and said give me 10 push-ups and 10 squats uh, i'll tell you what i'll tell you what the ghost of ed mcmahon would say he'd walk into anyone who's currently on disability and he'd go i have 10 million i have one million dollars you have two weeks i'm gonna come back if you can do 10 push-ups and 10 squats with no weight i will give you one million dollars 97.3% of the people that are currently on disability who say they can't work their data entry job would fucking get down and do it. And there's no there's no one that can convince me otherwise. All the fuck, I got in a car accident, my back in pain, I can't hug my kids. Everyone's a fucking nut job now. Everyone's a hypochondriac. Everyone's trying to cash a check. Every third billboard in Vegas has been injured, been injured in a hotel, mm. been in, been hit by a semi-truck, been hit by a truck. Everything is, everyone's got neck pain. Everyone's fucking getting paid. We're circling the fucking drain. We you're, are circling the drain. You're missing the bigger point of all of this. Tom Brady is now throwing Christmas trees further than yeah, he did right. when he was 22 years old. When Evil Knievel, <laughs> one year before Evil Knievel died, he was able to fuck the shit out of a 19-year-old. And that man has broken every bone in his body. So don't fucking tell me. Do you have any regret? Your accident is worse than, you know, jumping school buses over Wembley Stadium. <laughs> Do you have any regret using Ed McMahon as a reference in that last rant? I mean, I feel like it could have been updated a little bit. Oh, I said the ghost. No, you didn't the first time. Uh, And then you realized he was dead. uh, No. (laughs) He represented the publisher's clearinghouse. Yeah. And he showed up with giant checks. Yeah. I, if you have a more timely reference of a guy who yeah, shows up with giant Columbia checks. why not Columbia Records and Tapes? Why not, uh, you know, Kitty Dukakis? No, no, you must find <laughs> me a, re- a more timely reference of if someone Rockefeller who... Rockefeller himself no, showed up. more timely reference of someone who shows up with giant checks. Uh, yeah, if you can't do it, all we got is Ed McMahon. What about the people... The athletes every year that go into the uh, into the inner city and they throw turkeys at people. Those people could show up. Yeah, but if I said Ty Law showed up with a giant check, you'd be confused. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I, I mean, sort of, but no, yeah, at the same time. Yeah. I tried to pick a New England reference. I so appreciate you it. I understand yeah. that area. Okay, sorry. Um, so the couple whose gender reveal party sparked the El Dorado fire in San Bernardino County in 2020 were mm-hmm. sentenced. Mm. So remember, they, they inadvertently started a 22,000 acre fire mm. Mm. Um, with a device that was supposed to emit blue or pink smoke. And um, yeah, so the... They should do a sentencing reveal party. <laughs> <laughs> the judge is like, look... You're yeah. either going to get probation or 22 <laughs> years hard time. Why, why isn't every sentence? I that, like that. That would be you, great. You would have to agree to it. No. No, no, listen. Listen. I know you're falling back on your groundlings training by screaming no into the microphone. I've never did groundlings and you know uh, that. No shit. No you shit. know that. No shit. You did it. Pete Holmes did You needed it. Pete Holmes You needed it. I'm a natural. I'm a natural. No! <laughs> All right, listen. You would have to if be. Babe would, Ruth showed up at your yeah, house. You would have to say <laughs> to your lawyer and and the client, they would go, "Look, right now, you're you're really staring down the face of twelve to sixteen years, okay? 
That's pretty much what you're looking at right now. If we do the sentencing reveal party, you could get probation or you could get 22 years no probation. Ugh. But are you going to pull? Right now, you're going to be in for wait 12 a minute. years What's, minimum. Wait, minimum. You got to take the gamble. Wait a minute. You're saying that if they do the reveal, they could get more time? Or less. <laughs> I don't feel like I need. I, this doesn't need a re-explanation. Or no, it's just confusing. Why it's not, not confusing? You'd have to be probation or more time. No, this yeah. doesn't make any sense. It was it was <laughs> okay. funny in its right, original here's incarnation. Here's the scenario. <laughs> okay, here's it's scenario. funnier. Here's the scenario. This is you are looking at twelve years. Yes, but you want to do the reveal. You want to do the the mandatory reveal party or yeah. the reveal uh, sentencing reveal, then according to your logic, you either get probation or two years. No. It, because then who wouldn't choose it? Like I said, originally. It's got to be more. Every, every, every uh, verdict should be a reveal party verdict. And then. I agree. It Legally, would, it would be difficult why? to push. Why? They pull a thing and it says, you know, how many years or guilt, guilty, red for guilty, green oh. for not guilty. Come yeah. on. Yeah, okay. I think I I think in order to expedite this, you'd have to agree to these these terms. That's yeah. what I think. Although I would do a, I would be happy with a reveal for for any sentence. Me too. I think I, any I sentence, well. red, green, and then you get the details. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Well, if they would have done the reveal, it would have been red. And he was sent. The guy was sentenced to a year in county jail, wow. two years of felony probation, community service. Uh, the woman, uh, three misdemeanor counts of recklessly causing a fire to another's property, and sentenced to a year of probation. And they had to pay victims restitution. Uh, a year amount. probation, but she doesn't get time. Right. Why don't the chicks get the the time? Like the dudes get the time. And also. Women live seven years longer than men on average, so they should get more time. Yeah. The ratio. Yeah. yeah, like if, if you're going to yeah. sentence a dog yeah. <laughs> to a crime, you'd have to use dog, dog years. years. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't be fair to use people years <laughs> right. for a dog. Right. You, you know what I mean? I agree. We, okay. agree. we agree on some on things. Right. All right. And they, mm -hmm. had to, they have to pay victims restitution of uh, one about $1.8 million. Oh. All right. Uh, Haley Joel is, is here, Ooh. by the way. It should be it should be noted. He's mm. got a new movie out. Good dude to talk to. Sorry, I was reading up on him. You know, while while Orny was waxing on about one of his many, mm. you know, his comical stories. Um, so we're gonna swap Orny out for Haley. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Let's get a let's get a, let's get a real guest in here. You know. Wow. See what we can do. Well, this has been uh, such hurt. a pleasure. <laughs> I, I thank you. It's always fun. It's always fun to come in and hang out and uh, you know. Is yeah, yeah. It? Mix it up. I yeah. love whenever you come in. Kibitz, as your, yeah. your people yeah, would this say. Yeah, great. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. no. He's got plugs. So walk oh, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, the the podcast, know, What's Wrong with Orny Adams. By uh, the way, uh, hmm. guest of the year, Pete Holmes. Oh, on this wait a minute. I did on this episode. On mine. On your on episode, that's oh, yeah. where I bring home the jewelry, <laughs> right? Yeah. I was a guest. You were not guest of the year. Well, better than Pete. You know, Pete... <laughs> There's a lot of back and forth. Watch the clips I put up on the internet. It's uh, it's really, he's good. Oh, no, he's good. But he's let good. me explain what happened. Yeah. It, it's like Muhammad Ali was great, right? But his fight with Joe, smoking Joe Frazier, almost killed him. And he just left it all in the ring. Mm -hmm. And he was never that again. You yeah. know, he was a he was a former shell. I, I mean, he had it with George Foreman. I don't know, Zaire. I don't know where he was in, in Manila. He, he was done. He was depleted by then. And he never really regained that form. And uh, Pete Holmes comes in here, leaves it all. Just leaves oh, it I all can in imagine. the air. And then goes on to your podcast and he's Ali fighting Holmes at this point. He's still he, recovering. He's a, he's a, it was a shell of his former great you know self. What he said to me? But I come on your <laughs> podcast and I'm in peak form. So, no, you were in peak form. You were great. So that's why I get guest of the year on your. He said to me, he said, I got to tell you something. It is what a joy and so easy to do a podcast where the host isn't looking down, writing <laughs> notes every time I'm speaking. Like, do they know to cut away? Like, on the video, <laughs> they know not to have a two-shot of you, you know, writing shit down about your next guest. 
I thought you were taking a break. I was going to light a cigarette and read my notes. All right. Do we you, have a system for getting me out of here? Yes. I, I just it, let myself out? No, we'll take, we'll take a break. To quote the great Ed McMahon, get your dog <laughs> spaded and neutered. Yes. Yeah. Spaded. Orneyadams.com is where you go for all the live shows. Yeah. And uh, oh, yeah. we'll we're talk to Haley Joel Osment. We're comedy club for the uh, Netflix's Joke Festival. I don't, oh. Kabuka, uh, ka, Karabu, whatever, it's in your notes. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't glance at them. I was Kookaburra, yeah. Kookaburra Lounge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. May fourth in Hollywood. Oh. When are you doing it? Because I saw you on the calendar. Uh, I'm not sure. I got to find that out. Am I not looking at that? Uh, do I not have that on my thing, or am I missing it somewhere? What do you have? You have the Comedy and Magic March seventh. Hmm. Is it not on mine? Yeah, I have on mine. Oh, where is it? Yeah, let's read these plugs. Let's see Down the thing. All right, listen. We got a real guest out there. We can't make him, <laughs> we can't make him wait. Is it on mine? No, it's not on yours. That's weird that yeah. we got two different ones. Yeah. That's weird that, that things are screwed up here. No, it's yeah. not weird. It's I know. A, All right. Situation normal. We'll take a break. Love you guys. Talk Love to you. Haley right Bye. after this. Let me tell you about Morgan & Morgan. It's 2024. So let's talk about something important. If you get hurt this year. Your injury could be worth millions of dollars. If you're injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide, and more than 1,000 lawyers, more than $20 billion recovered for 500,000-plus clients. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you your full and fair compensation. They've been fighting for the people for over 35 years, racing my vintage cars. Eh, that can be a little hard, or at least I make it look hard. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is super easy. It's Morgan & Morgan. Am I right, Dawson? If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, ThePeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. The Adam Carolla Show presents Haley Joel Osment's birthday cocktail party. For April 10th, let's see who's invited. Let's welcome the King of Scotland, James V. Here's the Commodore of the U.S. Navy who opened Japan to Western trade, Matthew C. Perry. Here's the founder of the Salvation Army, William Booth. Let's welcome the namesake of the Pulitzer Prize, Joseph Pulitzer. From MASH and Dragnet, actor Harry Morgan. Legendary actor Max von Sydow is here. Actor Omar Sharif is here. Here's Hall of Fame coach and legendary sportscaster, John Madden. Also from the NFL and Monday Night Football, Don Meredith. From the Whalers, here's Bunny Whaler. Steven Seagal just walked in. From the Stray Cats, here's Brian Setzer. From Sons of Anarchy, Charlie Hunnam is here. Let's welcome singer Mandy Moore. From the latest round of Star Wars movies, Daisy Ridley. Haley Joel Osment is on The Adam Carolla Show. The movie is called Drug Store June. It's available now in select theaters and uh, digital distribution to be announced soon. It's a uh, Quirky. It's got some. Uh, uh, it's got some Juno in it. I would say. Speaking of June, funny, and um, Haley's great in it. And I'm always always happy to see you working. Thanks, man. Nice to see you. Yeah, I don't know why, but you know, you were so known as a young child star, and usually doesn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, but you know, it's a great Danny Bonaducci told me once. He goes, you know, they always make this thing about the curse of the child star, and now they're all junkies and drug acts and, you know, whatever. Everything's a mess. He goes, but think about all the dudes you went to high school with. And I'm like, yeah. And think about all the ones that became a mess after high school. I'm like, that was pretty much all of my friends. And I'm like, oh, so you're right. The ratio is about the same. We just know, of, we just know about it. But I always love seeing you work as an adult. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I guess the... Uh 
the percentage is about the same uh, going through those high school classes. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, six cents. And I loved you in Entourage too. Which oh, thank I think you. I, yeah, I had I, a good time on that one. It's, yeah. I, it's, I don't even want to call it a guilty pleasure because I think it's actually really good, but I've just always loved Entourage. I love the movie and I love you in the movie as well. Yeah, those are fun guys. And getting to work with Billy Bob as my dad in that movie too, which is a, which was a joy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know him well at all, but he just seems like a dude. Absolute dude, yeah. And he and I discovered that uh, we're in Glendale right now, and I lived in a street in Glendale when I was 32 years old, and he uh, lived on the same block when he was 32 years old, we discovered, by the Acapulco in uh, on Pacific Avenue in Glendale. <laughs> the Acapulco. <laughs> Which was there, I guess, in the 80s the, the Mexican, and in the 2000s. The Mexican food place. Oh, yeah, yeah, with a little tower. Somewhere. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's funny. I, it's so funny when you think back on the day, because I remember super clearly the day when Jimmy Kimmel, who's a foodie and a half, now, like, he he owns multiple pizza ovens, you know? <laughs> and he's a nutty, he's a food maniac. He does the Feast of the Seven Fishes every year. He does that. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's a maniac. And <laughs> yeah. I, I remember one day, you know, in like 1994, I had a coupon, a two-for-one for the Acapulco yeah. Yeah. in Glendale. <laughs> I had a two-for-one, and I said, I got hold of Jimmy after a shift ended at K-Rock at like 11 in the morning, and I was like, listen, brother, <laughs> your ship has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> I got a coupon. Two of us are going to eat at the Acapulco in Glendale. Oh, and yeah. Only one of us is going to have to pay. And he's like, I am so there. <laughs> got Sizzling canceled. fajitas. Uh, he, day, would yeah. want, he would want $3.7 million now to go with me to the Acapulco. <laughs> Going Glendale and eat a full meal. <laughs> but, so, you know, everyone wasn't always a foodie. Yeah. Um, so for you, you, I mean, you, how old were you, were you with, well, I can do the six cents math, but I mean, the seven, I don't know, what the, how old were you? I was uh, 10 when we shot it and 11 when it came out. And Forrest Gump was? I was four years old. That was four. 92, yeah. I just being a part of too hu- iconic, I guess, is what. There's good movies, like, you know, then they win Academy Awards, and, you know, there's there's plenty of them, but they, you'll never, you'll ne- like, Moonlight won an Academy Award, but it's, my son is never going to see it. You know what I mean? He it's might, not, you know. <laughs> he, he may, right? his gentleman friend may introduce him to it. He should. Uh, but what I'm saying is they don't make it into that iconic, thing and those two for sure and i I feel very lucky because i feel like the 90s in particular and 1999 in particular when six cents came out were such a major year for for films uh in a way that and that oscar year when i went like it doesn't feel like culture surrounds that event in the same way anymore like because we have you know, with phones and everything and with social media, it's like there's there's a little bit of a distributed culture now. And back then it was like, this is the one night. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I guess the Super Bowl is pretty much all we have for that yeah. anymore because, yeah, everyone is doing their own thing. And there's also, it's like, there's so many different cultures that, you know, you you could drive around on Super Bowl Sunday and see guys just playing Mexican music who speak in Spanish. Like then they're kicking a soccer ball at the park. Like they don't even have any. That's not. They're not interested in it. And 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 the Oscars used to be that. It had such a share yeah. of the collective attention of of the society that it was there. Do you have? You remember who hosted that night? Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal. Yeah. So you got an iconic yeah. host. Yeah, absolutely. Did, did you have, uh, I mean, you obviously did, but what was going to be your angle for your speech? Uh, gosh, I had it written down on like a post-it note in my, in my uh, uh, wallet. Were you 11 at this point? I was 11 at this point. And the good thing is that the Oscars are the last award show after like 15. So you get a lot of practice going up to them and mm-hmm. uh, with the Golden Globes and everything. Um, but I remember leading up to when they did the supporting actor, which is my category that year, uh, we were in the shrine that year. I think it was one of the last years at the shrine. And I was sitting across from Clint Eastwood on the aisle 
And when we stood up for Warren Beatty, who got the Irving Thalberg Award that year, mm-hmm. like he was getting the, um, I knocked the uh, the um, uh, arm cover off and hit Clint Eastwood <laughs> that year. So that was, I was already a little thrown from that. So, yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy because, you know, Clint Eastwood was 75 at the time. I know. Back then he was a legend, and now it's like he's been directing, what, 25 more movies since then? <laughs> it's, like, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> you would have thought, well, by the time I turn 21, this old cat's going to be long gone. Like, <laughs> nope, he's in Carmel no, right now. Still there, yeah. So for for you, you, you start early. Did you want to start early? Did you have a you know showbiz family? Did they did they? I mean, obviously, at f- age four, you can't go out on auditions unless somebody thinks it's a good idea in the family. The the way that it happened was uh, an accident, and in a way that would definitely not happen these days. I was at the old IKEA in Burbank, my, shopping with my mom, and there was a <laughs> casting booth in front with uh, two women taking Polaroids of kids going into the store, which seems a little suspicious yeah. now. Going <laughs> right. back. But they took a Polaroid of me, and then I got a, uh, a call, I guess, from the number we put on the Polaroid, and uh, I got a commercial for uh, the Bigfoot Pizza from Pizza Hut. Ah, the big one. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the casting director from Forrest Gump saw that commercial, and so things kind of went from Wow. There. Yeah. God, it seems so... Um, analog, you yeah, know, very, now, very analog time. Everything yeah. <laughs> is so digital now, but it's also, it's also weird that we were able to do all the things in an analog way that we do in a digital way now. Like how much, how much was actually got accomplished? Oh, and and just uh, having a group of people meeting up somewhere. I just watched the Netflix documentary about the We Are the World sessions. Yeah, I it's saw like, that too. Who was on the <laughs> phone calling 50 people that night? Like, Yeah, the sure manager, Lionel Richie's manager had the heavy-duty Rolodex. <laughs> yeah. But he, somebody had to flip to, you know, what's Prince's last name? Or do we put it under P? <laughs> oh, Schedule Gold, it, Goldstein. It. Well, okay. We'll put it under G. Okay. <laughs> 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 and they, they have to call him, and it's like, he, I don't know, he was calling Stevie Wonder, and Stevie Wonder just wasn't picking up. Oh, and, yeah, for months. Like, like nobody, help us write this. And nobody, he's like, oh, we writing it tonight? Like, yeah. Nobody knew where people were. But at some point after the Grammys, at, you know, at, at A&M Records, at some point there were 50 of the biggest musical acts in the world standing there. Yeah. How did that happen? Because it starts from a Rolodex with a bunch of cardboard numbers written on a bunch of little inserts, and all of a sudden, they're there. So like somehow, we worked it out. I always feel that way about all the stuff. You know, you're too young, but all the urban stuff, you know, Richard Gere put a gerbil in his ass, and Rod Stewart. <laughs> oh, I'm young enough for that. Okay, or old enough for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's old weird. The gerbil story. I'll, 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 I'll meet some, I'll, you know, I'll talk to some guy and I'll go, where'd you grow up? And he go, it'll go, uh, Brattleboro, Vermont. And I'll go, oh, you went to high school and uh, junior high and high school in Brattleboro, Vermont? And they go, yep. And I go, did you hear the whole Rod Stewart had to have a stomach pump story? And they go, oh, yeah. We got that one. And I'm like, how the fuck did it make it to Brattleboro? Oh. How, how, did, how did those things happen? Back how then? did they work? Marilyn Manson's His rib. rib. Yeah. Right, how that, right. Yeah, how did those things? Pre, <clears throat> excuse me. Pre-tweets and texts and Twitter and and, and Facebook. How, Bo, oh, they they did. Truly a game of telephone from everybody. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. So, oh, we have the Bigfoot Pizza Hut commercial. Oh, I, should, I certainly hope so. 30-second version of that? Oh, let's see. I remember it's a big long one. Recently, an object was sighted. <laughs> it was big, bigger than big. Huge, huge, large, astronomically big. Big would be an understatement. Oh. Very big, huge. That kid in the hat is huge. Up. huge. I know. When it arrives, you better not be alone. Bigfoot. Pizza Hut. From Pizza Hut. Two square feet of pizza. And it wasn't very good. <laughs> you, know, it's always, I, you know what's always funny when I see all the pizza commercials now? Oh, there you are. They're literally just 
they're leaning into the carb thing. Like yeah. everyone else is going, hey, you got to back up on the carbs. You got to hit the protein a little hard. They're like, we got a 12 foot pizza. <laughs> and then for dessert, we got pizza balls. Yeah. And then as an appetizer, we got pizza sticks. We got dough sticks. And we put a sack of flour over your head. Double and then dip. you eat it through a hole in the sack of the flour. Yeah. And it's like, you're not even going to pretend. Like, you're not even going to put one piece of broccolini anywhere. Like, you're not nope. even going to do a veggie lover. You're not even going to pretend that you're even coming close to this. It is like a carb explosion because the pizza is a carb explosion and all the other sides. The appetizer is breadsticks. Wait, you're just, telling me the, the sauces are carbs? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I love when you can tell that Jack in the Box or some other place found some vat of something in a warehouse and they're like, uh, we've got a special <laughs> with the good, good sauce. Yeah. yeah. We found something. Uh, I do. <laughs> I have my theory. All right. You can look up the stuff called slime. From back in the day, there was something called slime. How back in the day? Nickelodeon it's, or it's still uh, around. Pre Nickelodeon, it came in a little garbage can, <laughs> and I never bought it because I was, I, a, I didn't have money, but b, I was like, I found it repugnant. You know, it was goo that you'd play with, but eventually you'd get cat hair and an acorn and shit in it. It'd be weird. I remember you know? we had gak. We had gak. Like, yeah, gak oh, had came gak. in like a little Made pod fart or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My theory is that that shit, and last week I was explaining the slinky. The slinky was probably the byproduct. Oh my god, I remember this from a munitions factory lathe. <laughs> right, you know what I mean? Where they were spring that went bad. They were doing armor piercing forty millimeter shells, and oh, that's right. the part the lathe. Don't pull that off. <laughs> yeah, it, it kept falling on the ground, and so and it would walk or move around, and someone picked it up and went, eh, "It's like an accordion." And then someone went, well, we should sell this shit. And I feel like slime was some sort of byproduct from some chemical factory <laughs> or something. And somebody went, it came in a trash can. It was green. And it was just called slime. And, it, it, and it's from like 78 or something. It's way pre, pre -exit, uh, predates Nickelodeon and whatever. You guys had gack. Yeah. It's like, oh, kids love phlegm. Oh, uh, yeah. Just roll it in the dirt, you know. It's what's inside Stretch Armstrong if you rip his arm right. off. Oh, like, really? Yeah, yeah. You had to know, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or there was a sexual component to it that I was unaware well, of. Maybe. <laughs> so, you, did you ever, did you have a dry spell in between all the roles early and then the the adult roles i uh i made a great business decision to go to college when i turned 18 <laughs> um which was a, a great experience for me as a person but uh i left la for 15 years uh i lived in new york uh from 2006 until right before the pandemic with really odd timing uh before coming back here and uh i don't know like i I definitely went into this business knowing that you're not always going to be in the top, you know, number one movie all the time. But uh, taking that break and working with a lot of people my age for the first time was a great experience out there. Yeah. And is it for you? I mean, um, I'll get a little cathartic, but I just feel like this business is like you have to get out there and you have to kind of pedal a row or whatever the metaphor is every day. And I feel like almost everyone is like eight months away from just being out of the business. Like if you just went, with with rare exception, if you just went, I'm not doing anything for a year, someone would go, fine, but you'll you'll be out of the business. Sure. Like you literally have to book it and do it and sort of churn it like every day, which, which is fine. Uh, but it, I always had that kind of feeling. And I, I don't know, do you share that feeling? Absolutely. And especially now when uh, the advent of these new AI programs were so heralded where they're like, we're not going to hire anybody ever again. You're <laughs> right. like, oh, good. Like, that's what we, that's what we wanted from that. And I think for me, I kind of enjoyed doing those mid-range independent films. And someone who said it uh, way more articulately than I did was Matt Damon on Hot, uh, Hot Ones, when they're like, why don't you do these, like The Firm and all these things anymore? And he's like, well, we used to sell DVDs abroad, and that's gone. Right. And so that type of movie doesn't exist anymore. And now you have to either do a $200 million movie or a movie where everybody brings their own Doritos to set. Uh, so. Yeah, but you never, 
you never know when you're going to capture lightning in a bottle with that lower stuff because mm-hmm. it's not all based on the merits. You have to be good and good enough to make it past a thir- certain threshold. But then, you know, you, you take these sort of deep indie things, like remember, like the foot fist way and stuff like oh, that, yeah, you know, yeah. and you kind of go, why was that? Why do I even know the name of that movie? But it it, it, it caught uh, Will Ferrell, I think, saw it. But, but I mean, it, it, you have to capture, you have to get a little magic in there. It happens with horror a lot now with yes. um, that Aust- that great Australian movie from last year. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, talk to uh, me. Talk to me. Yeah, right. things like that. Like, and I think a lot of upcoming filmmakers understand that you got to go into genre first to create that kind of audience because, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you don't know in advance. No. no. So you just keep doing it, and yeah. then the answer is, I guess, you do it for the sake of doing it, not because you're planning on capturing lightning in a bottle and the uh (laughs) bummer of the situation is that we're quickly going into an industry where the only people who can afford to take that chance are people who are independently wealthy from other sources and that's not great for art when somebody's only doing it on a lark and like you need people who are doing it because and it's the same in music too or um the things that people get from spotify or streaming it's like well you want people to be able to make money just doing what they're doing instead of being independently wealthy and being able to survive that first phase of being a musician. Are you are you doing writing as well? Yeah. Yeah. I uh I was rewarded with my first projects with the pandemic when I moved back to Los Angeles and then I had some stuff going and was rewarded with the strike last year. So this year feels like the first normal year in a while where it's it's uh there's opportunities to pursue independently making, you know, some stuff uh, that's self-generated. Are you leaning more towards comedies these days? I see you on a bunch of comedy shows, uh, obviously Silicon Valley, um, Drugstore June. Yeah. So is that is that kind of... A lot of my friends are comedians, and it's just been a, a great time for comedy over the last five to ten years, and I, I never saw myself getting into it intentionally, but yeah, with things like uh, Silicon Valley and what we do in the shadows, like getting to know that community of people... Um, that's where the work has been. Nice. Yeah. Is, uh, is there anyone you want to work with or anyone you don't want to work with again? <laughs> it's a better question. I have been so lucky because the best stories are people who have horrible experiences on set, uh, listening to Pat Oswalt talk about being on blade three and everything. Like <laughs> I don't really have those experiences where we had kind of a catastrophe on set. I've been very, very lucky um, I'd say Paul Thomas Anderson's probably one of my favorite directors. I'd love to work with him. Um, I hope Martin Scorsese lives to be 300 years old. Oh, yeah, uh, for yeah. sure. We yeah. got to give him. Him and Clint are probably going to be doing a project. Around yeah. There. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we'll just with, with dead, actors but... like that, I mean, not actors, with people like that, it's like there's so much life and, and you know, it's somebody who's even at 80 years old still discovering new things about what they're doing, and that's really exciting. Have you yeah. had any chance to have any contact with Bruce Willis? Yeah, I know his daughters, and uh, it's been a couple of years now, but he would, he would leave. We were talking about rotary phones. He would leave uh, um, voice messages uh, at our family home when I was in... Uh, elementary school and high school on this Nickelodeon phone that we used to have (laughs) at home. And he and I got to spend a lot of time together doing this extensive press tour in Japan um, for like two years after that movie came out. So he was a really good guy and it's uh, it's just a brutal, brutal break what happened to him. He does, you know, the blessing for him seems to be his family who never stops rallying around him, ex-wives yeah. and, mm-hmm. you know, even stuff that sometimes does gets a little messy and doesn't really work out in life. He seems to have gotten them all, or they seem, I shouldn't say he got them to rally around him, but he did through his actions. I mean, through being a good soul, I guess. But he seems very loved and very taken care of. Which Absolutely. Is, you know, about the most you could ask for for this situation, you know. And in um, uh, uh, Matthew Perry's book that came out last year, his chapter about working with him on the whole nine yards and just about how good Bruce was at just being a movie star. Like, there was no better person at being a movie star and inhabiting that role. He was great at it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that 
the comfort in your skin thing works. I mean, you'll see it in dogs <laughs> a lot. You know, some dogs are like agitated and frazzled all the time, and then others are just perfectly comfortable. Like, I guess they call it it, or they used to call it it. They'd say that guy's a natural, or that guy has it. You know, and no one's been able to define what it is other than we know it when we see it. Like a pitcher, he's got the stuff. Yeah, yeah, because they can all throw ninety-four miles an hour. So that's not what's going to separate. The it, that's not like the it part, but he has it. And I think, I guess in order to be a, a real leading man, like I think you have to have it. Other than other than that, you're you're good looking and you're a good actor. Yeah. But the but the it part is kind of the pixie dust, right? Where you want to hang out with that person no matter what movie they're in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's a strong. I mean, that's that's how Obama was. Like you go, I want to have a beer with that guy. Yeah. You know, that's the that's the it part. And like, you know, Richard Nixon's policies could have been better than Obama's, but we'll never know because we wanted to have he a beer with Obama, much, yes. and he was sweating too much, and we didn't want to have a beer with him, which makes us kind of cruel in a weird way. Because I, I I do understand there's people we judge in a negative way who do not deserve it at all simply because of the way their eyes are They don't are have shaped. the presentation. Yeah, yeah. 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 The guy's got a little sweat on his upper lip. Well, he's talking to 60 million Americans. <laughs> Maybe you'd have a little sweat on your lip as well. My friend's uh, parent was in the Nixon administration, and they said that Ben Stein told them, they said, you haven't lived until you've dropped quaaludes on Air Force One. <laughs> oh, really? <Yeah. laughs> Sounds like Ben. <laughs> ben is an interesting soul. Yeah. I saw him at... Jimmy's twentieth anniversary for uh, his TV show. Jimmy was that was Jimmy's first show. thing, right? Ben Stein's money way back in the day. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. yeah. Ben, when Ben Stein's money was uh, Jimmy's show back in the day, and I I remember going on Win Ben Stein's money once, and I realized we're har- we're far too harsh on people that are on game shows because your brain locks up when when you're up there. Sure. And. I was. I remember trying to come up. Who sings "Alone Again" naturally? That's G- Gilbert S- O'Sullivan. O'Sullivan. All right, all right. Gilbert O'Sullivan. Right. Yes. Who was the famous heavyweight boxer from you know like the turn of the century? He was an O'Sullivan, as as well. And for some reason, they said, oh, God, heavy, uh, legendary boxer O. Sullivan. Or no, Sullivan. L, L, John L. Sullivan. John L. Sullivan, oh, right? So yeah. they were like, who sung an Alone Again Naturally? And I was like, John L. Sullivan. Like, oh. No, nope, Gilbert O. Sullivan. Like, that would have been like, a meme today. And, and, and I was like, fuck, I know that. But you're fucking brain locked the because there's a fucking camera in your face and yeah. a light in your face. And I take a, a heavyweight boxer from 1913 <laughs> and I swap him out with a one hit wonder from 1973, <laughs> which I would never do if we're having a beer and we're hanging around <laughs> watching relaxed. TV. Yeah. yeah. But they put you on that spot. And John L. Sullivan comes flying out when Gilbert O. Sullivan oh, should have come flying out. Brutal. Yeah. Yeah, wow. see, those are first world problems, bitches. <laughs> you don't think I suffer? I suffer. I'm just like you. Uh, do you remember, this is a 90s thing, the noise of the uh, board game taboo, the buzzer. Mm. when you the, Yeah, right, That's right. a little 90s thing. <laughs> that's that all I, you hear when you yeah. say Gilbert <laughs> O'Sullivan instead of John L. Sullivan. <laughs> Slime was created during World War II as an inexpensive substitute for synthetic rubber by accident it's all by accident all the junk every kid played with in the 70s 80s and 90s was some byproduct accident thing that turned into something we uh on d-day we were throwing lawn darts over the atlantic wall to get them yeah, <laughs> yeah to kill the crowds. <laughs> we were throwing it over the hedgerows <laughs> during the normandy invasion and then it turned into a great backyard game yeah which was outlawed i think lawn darts has to be the only outlawed outdoor game that was officially sold. Now, there have been yeah. things that have been 
outlawed, but they weren't made by Hasbro. Like, Smear the Queer is no longer a game kids can play right. on a schoolyard, but it didn't come in a box. I think... Or or the, the creepy crawlers or the little Susie oven, which, like, heated to, like, 5,000 degrees <laughs> yes, they Kelvin had, or something. They trusted it's us like, way too much. I can't kids. believe how hot that thing used to get. They, they had, <laughs> like, a 200-watt light bulb. Yeah, it was just a light bulb. And you bulb. just put it in the thing. Uh, creepy crawlers <laughs> was when you would put gak into, like, an oven And then pan. bake it in yeah. this thing. <laughs> All right, let me give a plug for the movie. Yeah. Drug Store June. It's a... Uh, it's a delightful movie. Awesome cast, too. Awesome Great cast. Lasser, Bill Burr. Every Bobby comedian Lee. you love is yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And it's it's fun. It's funny. And it's like I said, I don't know why. I, just, I've, I had a little Juno kind of vibe for those of you who uh, like that. Started with the chair. Uh, hey, like, come back uh, anytime you like and plug uh, anything you like. Absolutely. We well, at the Acapulco like every weekend. So. Yeah, I'll see you Acapulco there. on <laughs> Pacific Avenue in Glendale. I got my coupon. And Yoshinobu Yamamoto, the great pitcher, uh, Shohei Otani, go Dodgers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thomas Hayden Church is next. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto parts. Well, they're in the business of keeping your car on the road. O'Reilly offers friendly, helpful service and parts and knowledge you need to do all your own maintenance and repairs. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online, so you never have to worry. If you're in a jam, they'll help you out. When you're a do-it-yourselfer and need a specialty tool to finish the job, well, stop by O'Reilly and uh, ask for one of their loaner tool programs because there's a lot of real special tools when it comes to doing certain jobs on cars. Simply pay a refundable deposit and borrow the right tool, then get the deposit back when it's returned, so it's free. They'll help you find the right part or point you to the nearest local repair shop for help. Plus, they can test your battery for free in or out of the car so you don't have to pop it out. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto and You can find what you need in the store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Adam, before you die, you need to evade the police by driving through a cornfield. Get it on. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Thomas Hayden Church is with us. He's in Texas. Accidental Texan is the name of the movie. I watched it in advance. It is going to be in theaters Friday, this Friday, March 8th. And it's uh, very good. Thomas is great in it. And it's it's a very well done movie. Uh, uh, Scored and looks good. It looks like there's uh, quite a budget there. So good to see you, Thomas. You too, Adam. Great to see you. Uh, yeah, so uh, I, I was thinking about it. I was like, Thomas Hayden Church, why don't I talk to Thomas Hayden Church last? And then I thought, I I think it's been since Loveline, maybe even on <laughs> MTV back in the 90s. Um, it was uh, actually the very first time I was going around doing – uh, stuff for this series I did in the early '90s, Wings. Yeah, and I came to K Rock, and uh, and uh, just I just talked to you whenever because you were a DJ. I was doing Love Line on K Rock from sort of the mid '90s on, and then I was with the Morning Show before that for about right. like, two years or something like that. Yeah, that's that's when I f- I first met you because we hit it off. And then you you guys asked me to come back and do Love Line, and then you actually I guest hosted Love Line, I think one time when you were gone. Wow. Uh, yeah, with Doctor Drew, and uh, and somebody else. But uh, yeah, we hit it off. Tell me. Well, I'm glad we did. And and that. Tell me if this is how it works for you. So all I have in terms of a memory is a feeling. For people, I I don't have real specific this or that. I just go, 
yeah, I remember that guy. That guy's cool. Or I like that guy. Or that guy's, yeah. that guy's nice. And by the way, it's a two-way street because, oh, that guy's a douche and a dickhead or that chick's a bitch. <laughs> I can't stand her. But it's right. a feeling, you know. So, so, But also, and I don't know if you're wired this way, but I have little to no self-esteem. So if you said to me, Thomas Hayden Church, I'd go, oh, yeah, I remember interviewing him on Loveline. I don't think he's ever going to remember. He's not going to remember me, but I, I oh, do right. remember talking to him. No, and not only that, but I think you guys also interviewed me on the Man Show. Oh, and then and then I was I've I've been on Jimmy's show, not lately, but I bet I did Jimmy's show ten times. You know, it was funny speaking of Jimmy, and I always love this story for some reason, and it involves Wings, which is a series I think you you first kind of broke in. Which yes. is a, a good and 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 probably a little underrated or maybe not underrated, but just a good a good funny series uh, sitcom from the early nineties um, or mid nineties. Um, trying to think, yeah, early er, early nineties. Uh, one time I was in New York and Jimmy and I were were there together and we're down in the first floor of like the NBC building and we walked into a gift shop. And this is probably in 1999, maybe 2000. And in the gift shop, they had all the offerings for the for the series sitcoms and things like that. And they had a right. they had a Wings coffee mug yeah, that yeah. was sitting in the gift shop. And Jimmy, just because he's Jimmy, was like talking to the person. He wasn't buying anything. He was just talking right. to the person. And he goes, uh, "How's that Wings mug moving? Are they selling <laughs> a lot of units." And they're like. It's pretty popular. And he goes, really? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's a pretty popular item. Sold any today? No, not not today. When's the last time you sold one? I, I don't know. I don't work here all the time. It's probably been a minute, but you said it was a popular item. Yeah, it's, it's a popular show. It's a popular item. Okay. You think anyone here is going to buy a Wings coffee mug today? And she's like, they start squaring off because she's, she's taking a stand. Like this is a popular (laughs) mug and this was a popular sitcom and it's a popular item here. And he's like, I'm not saying it's not, I'm just saying, when is the last time you sold a wings mug? And then she starts getting pissed off and they have this argument over a wings coffee mug. And that's uh, that's my last wings memory. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, I was long gone by then. Um, the show went off in 97, but I left the show in 95 to uh, to do a, a, another show called Ned and Stacy. Yeah. Which was Deborah Messing's kind of her breakout. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, Jimmy, uh, I think Jimmy told me that story. <laughs> um, because I've been, on, I've been on Jimmy's show, like I said, several times for different projects. And uh, I think Jimmy told me that. That he really held her feet to the fire on that on that wings mark, <laughs> and also it would it falls under the heading of things guys will do and no woman would ever do. There's right. no woman that ever would walk into a gift shop and strike up a conversation about a coffee mug and then dig in go to battle. And, and go to <laughs> battle over the mug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she's a good employee, though. And then, of course, sideways. It's funny when you look back. Sideways is a is a great movie because it's it's big, it's small, it's it's like got heart, it's got a ton of comedy to it. It it tracks, it it moves, you know, it just fl- it flowed. You cared. Like it, it was really a breakout role for you, but in a, in a way, it, it, it was like a comeback role, but you weren't really gone or you hadn't been gone very long. Well, I, I you know, people ask me about that all the time, and, and especially when I do interviews. You know, after Ned and Stacy, I got offered a ton of, a ton more sitcoms, and I just didn't want to keep doing it. And, uh, but my, you know, my agency, they were like, okay, well, maybe you don't have to do one, but at least take a deal, you know, to develop one, which I did do. Um, I had a two-year deal with ABC and Disney that yielded a lot of fruit, most of which was spoiled on arrival. But uh, um, and then, and, but I started writing, and and then I got a movie made that I wrote and I directed, 
And that's where my interest really was for years. And But I knew Alexander, and I got sent uh, the script for Sideways, and I was like, oh, wait, this is a game changer. If I can get it, that was the big thing. I had to get it, mm-hmm. and I had to take it away from uh, none other than George Clooney. Whoa. Uh, yeah, because George Clooney and, and Brad Pitt were – they had read it and were chasing it. And, but Alexander, he really wanted a couple of actors that could authentically be those guys and not movie stars. Right. Which Paul and I were perfect for. <laughs> yeah. So. And uh, I'm sure you're tickled pink for Paul's success oh and nominations and everything I've, else. Uh, I've, I've sent him messages. He's been so busy, but I've talked to Alexander a couple of times since the movie just broke and, you know, I think it's a just a magnificent accomplishment for everybody involved. And, you know, those three performances are terrific. And Alexander and, and Kevin Tent and I don't know who the DP was, um, but, you know, they just Kevin, who's the editor, who's a friend of mine. They just did sit and then just cap atmospherically capturing, you know, the you know, like what everybody's been talking about. You know, all, all the way to, you know, this made up 70s looking focus features logo. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's just it's a brilliant achievement. And um, yeah, I hope Paul, I hope Paul wins. Um, so for you, are you a Texas native or are you there relocate there? No, we uh, we moved here when I was two and oh. uh, I was born in central California, but my my uh, parents split up. My grandparents lived in Texas, so we uh, we moved here when I was two, and uh, I've been here ever since, Adam. And I, uh, I live on i I have a ranch. So where I am right, I'm in San Antonio right now. Where I live is about an hour away, and then about uh, an hour and a half from here is my ranch, which uh, I, I I live on part time. Do you do things on that ranch, like raise yeah, things? We, yeah, we have, we have cattle. I have cattle. Oh, really? I've, yeah, I've had cattle for 25 years. Really? How many head yeah. of cattle do you have? Not a lot. We used to run a whole bunch when my partner was alive. Um, I mean, like back mm, even, I don't know, 15 years ago, we probably ran about 400, over 400 head. and But now I'm probably down to about 50 because it's really just me. And what, how do you run cattle i mean <laughs> what I'm, I'm from uh, i'm from north hollywood i'm from the san fernando yeah, valley we'll take notes. yeah run run is uh it's a colloquial thing it it just means that you you have cattle on your your property and uh and uh it's you know running the running aspect of, of it is is really applicable to running a business right so yeah i run cattle i'm running a cattle business um so for you and i don't know why I'm not sure why some celebrities seem less likely than others at a young age. And I, I don't know what to chalk it up to. Sometimes it's a look. Sometimes it's a way of speaking or an attitude or something like that. But um, when you were young, like when you were in high school, was acting always the plan? No. What was, was the ranching. Ranching was the plan. Oh, yeah. And yeah, so- no, my very first legit job that, you know, my parents didn't get them, didn't get it for me. I, I was, was working on a cattle ranch in South Texas. And, uh, and in fact, the character in, in, in Texan, that guy could have been taken out of my life 50 <laughs> years ago as a child, as a teenager, because those are the men I was around ranchers, oil men, farmers the men that were friends with my dad that we went to church with. And uh, no, no, my my ambition from when I first moved to L.A. in 89, it's been 35 years ago, whenever I moved to L.A., my ambition, even all through my 20s working in, in you know, as a, doing voiceover stuff in Texas, and but my ambition was to just get a cow, to get a ranch so that I could have cattle. I want, that's all I wanted to be was a cattle rancher. Yeah. When I was watching the movie, it was striking. It, it's, it struck me that I got so much out of 
old grizzled dudes who came across as sort of mean, but they really took the time to show you how to do things right, right. even right. if it was in sometimes a condescending way or an oh, yeah. insulting way. And I was talking to someone about this the other day, which is there's like a generational gap. You know, I had football coaches who would tell you get in a three point stance and then they'd kick your arm out and you'd fall on your face. And I didn't take it as criticism. I took it as I wasn't doing a proper stance. And Mr. Fitzgerald cared enough to kick my arm out. So I fell on my face. He was there. He was volunteering. He wasn't getting paid. You know, and then later on, when I became a carpenter, same as probably being a young ranch hand, all it is is old dudes yelling at you, you're doing it wrong. And then you learn. And then at some point, they invite you to have a beer with them. You know, right. at at the end of the work day. And that means you've kind of made it made it past the preliminary stuff. You made it past boot camp and into the into the club. You're still low on the totem pole, but now you're having a beer with these guys. <laughs> and I realize everyone under forty takes all this as an attack and criticism and why why you coming down on me, old man, and all this stuff. And it's why? like they're saying it because they care about you. They're it's the ultimate I'm looking out for you because I'm taking knowledge and wisdom and I'm passing it on to you and you can then use this and turn it into money. Uh, And I'm sorry if you don't like the way it's being delivered, but it's still the same information and and right. everyone is worried about everyone's tone. And I'm like, yeah. just forget about the tone. This, this guy knows right. something. He's been doing it for 40 years. He's telling you how to do it. His bedside manner isn't great. <laughs> but you should listen and be thankful instead of angry about it. Well, you know, something, you know, you may have heard Bill Burr goes off on this rant about how shaming or being ashamed is a naturally occurring emotion. And, and that, you know, but it's been so vilified and, and, and granted, it's been abused in our culture, but shame is a naturally occurring emotion. And when, when I worked on that ranch, which was the summer uh, when I was 13, 14 and 15 and 16, you know, I was never he never caused me shame on purpose. His name is Jim Walker. He still he still owns the ranch. The, his family still has the same ranch, you know, 50 years later. But. He would tell me how to do something, and if I screwed it up, he would just come back. He's like, "Okay, this is what." He was a very patient man. This is what you did wrong. This is what what you did wrong. But then there were instances where I was driving a John Deere tractor, and I had a a fence digging auger on the back of the tractor, and I quickly realized at fourteen or fifteen that I could do wheelies, you know, on the, with the tractor <laughs> right. because, of the weight, because of the weight of the auger. And so I'm, I'm bouncing down this road and I, well, you probably know what happened next. <laughs> when you're, when your front tires are up off the road, you cannot steer. Right. And so I, the, the tractor veered off and the front of the John Deere tractor went into the crotch of a tree. <laughs> I couldn't get it out. So I had to climb off the tractor and literally walk five miles to where to the ranch headquarters and then long truck drive back. (laughs) And then, you know, we figured out how to get the tractor out of the tree. But he didn't even he didn't even uh, punish me or chastise me for that. It was just like, well, I guess we know how we're not supposed to drive the tractor. Right. And I, you know, and you learned and you take those experiences into every new endeavor i know we're uh pressed for time here thomas but i i'm hoping when you're in la come by i i think um i think we might have a little extra oh i mean but but, if we do i'll 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 take um, it. I don't. Hey, well, you can ask. Some, you can yeah. ask your guy. I'll give. I'll give the movie a plug, and you can check yeah. with your guy if we we have a hard out I, or not. She got to pop up. Um, Accidental Texan hey, is the name hey, of the movie. It's uh, it's very well done, and Thomas is great in it. Awesome cast, too. and it's an awesome cast, and it is. Uh, it's it'll be in theaters this Friday, March eighth, and. Um, and Thomas, so and he works in the. He's an oil driller, 
Thomas has worked in the oil fields. He left. He dropped out of high school to work in the oil field. So this is a this is a good role met for him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, him no, and- it really was a it really was a terrific fit because um, you're you're the gentleman to your left, Chris. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what's Chris. Your, what, 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 Chris. 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 Um, Chris is right. When I was 17, I dropped out of high school and I worked in the oil fields for about six months. And uh, quickly realized I did not want to be at the blue collar end of that job, that world. And my parents convinced me to go back to high school, but they had moved from Laredo to the Rio Grande Valley. So I was starting over at a different high school. The other one, I'd gotten into a lot of trouble and, and um, which started with getting kicked off the football team, Adam. <laughs> and uh, uh but I went back to high school, graduated, went to college, and and that's when I got interested in acting was when I was in college. Yeah, and that 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 led me to you here today. <laughs> uh, and I I just want to you know sort of emphasize to people that all the sort of bumps and bruises and disappointments and difficulties when you're young are are a good thing. And yeah. they build up some calluses and they build up some resilience and they make, they build a little something called character. And then you graduate past that, hopefully. And, but you take those experiences with you. And then you realize that things aren't that difficult because you have something to contrast it to. When you work in the oil fields for six months, you realize that a 12 hour day on set with craft service and an air yeah. conditioned trailer, isn't that grueling? Right. And no, I mean, w- yeah. way back early on when I started doing a lot of press, um, I had a summer job that didn't last for even two weeks. And I told this story a lot of times, to- many times years and years ago, but th- I had a job working for the highway department and in South Texas in 110 degree heat, driving around in a dump truck, picking up dead animals. Right. And that was the absolute depths of my employment resume, of my resume. And I, and you're right. I mean, I'd be on movie sets where it's hot as hell, you know, you're, everything's going slow, you know, whatever, something breaks, you know, like, you know, so many on so many movies, including Texan, you know, we, it was a hard shoot. Because we really were drilling, right? Yeah, you know, we we really were running that drilling rig, and it was hot as hell out there where where we were shooting, and uh, but even on even that, I just was like, this is not as bad as picking up dead dogs in 1975. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to share those words with my son when I get home. <laughs> Thomas yeah. Hayden Church, yeah, your folks are telling us to wrap it, but that that's all right. We'll get you when you're in LA, come in and hang out and we'll, do, we'll do a long form. I'll do it. I'll do it. Accidental Texan, a uh, very good movie. It is coming out this Friday, March uh, 8th. Thomas, thank you for sharing thank a little you, extra Adam. time with us, and I hope to see you good real to see soon. You, buddy. All right. Thank you, Chris. You too. Thank you. All right. So you can go to adamcroll.com for all the live shows. I'm going to be at the Kimmel's Theater March 7th and 21st and all the way. I'm going to be at Kimmel's Theater in Vegas a lot. West Palm Beach, Florida coming up and Bakersfield and Chicago and Salt Lake City. Let's go to adamcroll.com for all that. Until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Orny Adams, Haley Joel Osman, and Thomas Hayden Church saying mahalo. Mahalo.